Alright, why does the game think that I don't speak Dwarvish? Do you speak Dwarvish? Mm, On your character I, sheet? I took, a, I took a few classes in college. <laughs> I hear about to say I took a few uh, levels in Dwarvish. <laughs> I'm multi-class Dwarf. Dwarf is a class in Gauntlet. I mean, it is a class, for it is a lifestyle. Supposedly I'm streaming, I don't know where I'm streaming to. Directly to the president's office. That would be amazing. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't we'd be swatted so fast. We'd be famous for a little bit, though. I know. Could be. Oh, it's, yeah, it's on my, it's on my Twitch. We'd be famous. Oh, super. it in post. <laughs> Speaking of uh, fixing things in post, any of you guys uh, watch Army of the Dead yet, or whatever it was called? Nope. No. No. It I movies. I, I thought it was meh, but uh, it's an interesting thing. There's a apparently it looks like dead pixels when you're watching it, but it's not your TV. It's just the stream of it somehow, like uh, something wrong with uh, the way they filmed it, and uh, they never fixed it in post, I guess. So there's certain scenes where, like, there's, you know, up to three just dead pixels on the screen as you're watching it, and it's and super weird. They're not but... just playing it off like the zombies got those three pixels. <laughs> That's the perfect marketing opportunity, <laughs> and they probably... are just yeah, it's probably flushing a it down way to the play it. But uh, that's that's not the way they've gone so far. So. I mean, you're expecting Snyder to do better marketing? That doesn't make sense. Alrighty, let me jump to the same map as you guys, get my handouts in order, and we can get going. And if you guys didn't see in the uh, Facebook chat earlier, you can do pop-out windows now, so... I am already doing that. It yeah, is... Much better. Very, very nice. Yeah, certainly. Preferable. Uh... I'd love to say I paid attention to all of that chat, but I was busy driving, so no. Again, still upset that you didn't risk the lives of your family. Hey, I mean, my, you know, Katrina had every opportunity to bring that up and respond for me, and she was just like, no, that's annoying, stop it. That's fair. Oh, yeah, and uh, I added uh, the 3D dice thing, as you guys can probably see. Um, you guys can customize that and turn it on or off if you want it or not, and customize your dice and stuff. Uh, there should be a link that was in the chat window when you joined. But uh, oh, if, nice. <laughs> if you miss that, then uh, if you go to like the gear and go to uh, I think configure settings and go to module settings. Uh, you can tinker with it in there under uh, I forget what it's called. Something about dice. So all right, we can do a, a quick recap of uh, next set or last session, and then uh, we'll get started. So after uh, finding your way or being uh, guided towards Mar Daniel by uh, Huntmaster Tethra, a Shatter Kai who you encountered in the Shadowfell, uh, you were promptly uh, under attack by a uh, foul creature that uh, apparently was responsible for that trail of death that you guys had followed. Uh, you helped defend the uh, Shatter Kai outpost from that creature and uh, gained a little bit of goodwill with uh, Gatekeeper Avelios, who was definitely uh, not kindly predisposed to you before, uh, especially after you uh, 
dropped mention of having spoken to the Aeseal, who apparently is a uh, cursed creature uh, as far as the Shatterkai are concerned. Um, so, uh, you more or less explained your uh, mission to them and wanting to gain entrance to Vangarath's castle for the uh, purpose of stopping the uh, rising power of Rosmordalis back in the Material Plane. And uh, he seemed uh, a little desperate, uh, and otherwise he wouldn't have considered it, but uh, wanted to solicit your aid in uh, finding out uh, the source of these attacks on Mardaniel from these uh, vicious Nightwalker creatures and to put a stop to it. And if he did that, then uh, he would help you gain entry into Vangarath's castle, as it is uh, floating a couple hundred feet above the uh, surface of what would be Lake Artan back in the Material Plane. And uh, appears to be uh, under a constant barrage of lightning bolts that are striking some invisible shield that surrounds the castle like a sphere um, when, as they uh, arc towards it. So uh, reaching it does not seem to be a simple task. But uh, nonetheless, you guys follow the trail of uh, death back into the, uh, the wild woods of the Shadowfell and came across, uh, upon an undead outpost that was uh, manned by a three-headed monstrosity that you came to know as a creature named Talogast, which was uh, an abomination basically made out of the remains of a couple of uh, exiled Shatterkai. And uh, they told you basically their sad tale and uh, shed some light on uh, some of the dark secrets that the Shatterkai were keeping in regards to uh, their culture and what they're doing to uh, survive and uh, pass down their skill. And uh, it seems to be uh, also something that the Aesil hinted at before when he was uh, referring to the, you know, those uh, creatures thinking they're uh, acting far more noble than they are and having a dark secret. But uh, it seems as if... Uh, when a Shatterkai here dies, uh, its soul is captured by some uh, artifact back in the, uh, the outpost. And uh, when children come of a certain age, they're actually brought before this artifact, and the souls of the fallen warriors are transferred into those uh, bodies as like a vessel, and the uh, children are more or less destroyed. And uh, Talagast's tale was uh, that he more or less uh, didn't want his daughter to be taken in that fashion and uh, tried to stand up to Evelios about it and uh, was exiled for it and ended up uh, his daughter dead and his wife and he exiled eventually to fall to creatures in the Shadowfell and become this uh, rage and revenge consumed monster that uh, found a way to uh, lay siege to the uh, Shatterkai outpost. Uh, despite hearing that sad tale and uh, you know empathizing with his uh, motives a little bit, uh, you decided a, a monster is a monster and uh, he needed to be down, which you did. Uh, although, with uh, great effort, and uh, you did manage to save uh, one of two captive Shatterkai. Uh, the other one was uh, roasted as a collateral damage, trying to take out the, uh, the uh, large clawed monster that was trying to carry them into the uh, portal to the negative plane that you have uh, figured out that the cave entrance in this area is. But uh, the other one, who is a uh, male elf by the name of Zyle, um, is uh, alive, not necessarily well. He is uh, was battered before you guys arrived, and he's been scorched and uh, you know hurt even more since then. But he remains alive, and uh, Tethra is very very thankful for that. It seems, and uh, that's pretty much where you guys are now. You have laid waste to uh, the Talagast and his minions, uh, fulfilling your contract with the Velios back in Mardaniel. Um, but you have definitely learned some disturbing things in the process. Any questions? I thought or... we'd hiked back to the. I thought we'd hiked back to the statue. I don't think you guys had yet. I'm pretty sure we're still no. here. Okay. I think you guys were talking about taking a long rest here before heading out, or we're discussing yes. whether or not you wanted to do that. Right. But I'm I'm fairly certain that you guys uh, have not gone back towards that statue. I really hope you haven't, because if you have, I definitely forgot to run a couple encounters. Uh, no, you're, you, I think you're right. I Guys, I don't think we should go back to the statue. <laughs> Let's, just rest. Let's just rest. Like, if you guys uh, already made it back to the statue, this is going to be a very abridged session tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in, Twitch. Uh, we yeah. are done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what, uh, what are you guys doing? You are uh, battered, bruised and drained of resources from your recent battle and uh, are one elf heavier than you were when you arrived. 
Sleep. Like we need to get rid of dead weight. Kill the elf. <laughs> All right. So you guys are uh, taking a rest. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. I think that's what we had planned on doing anyway before we left. You that's guys, okay uh, with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys are uh, posting up in the the ruined remains of Talagast uh, Tower, or. Uh, Moving out someplace else? Are you guys going to watch? Give me the deets. We could sleep in the cave. That seems like a good uh, idea. I mean, I will sleep in the tower. Pretty, pretty solid shelter in there. Tower seems acceptable. I'll take first watch. Like, Does the tower have any? <laughs> I guess there's there's floors of this tower that we haven't explored yet, right? Where are we kind of um, assuming that there's nothing really much in there? So th there's really not much in there. Uh, the one the, story the tower. tower is uh, crumbled and ruined, and really only the bottom story remains intact. Uh, you can see fragments of the uh, the floor above you, kind of serving as a patchwork ceiling above you. But beyond that is the uh, pitch black sky of the Shadowfell, as it, uh, the you know remains of it have crumbled to the earth long ago. Is there a fireplace or anything? Any other amenities? Um, nothing really intact here. It looks like uh, even this cage wasn't part of the original uh, construction. And uh, really, any furniture that existed here previously has either rotted away or been crushed by falling uh, debris as the tower crumbled. Gotcha. But it's, it's better shelter than uh, not the ruined remains of a tower. But it's, you know, you've seen better. Now, is it... Are the walls tall and secure enough that we don't have to worry about like monsters climbing over the top of them at least like regular monsters uh yeah you figure you have about uh 15 uh, ranging from 15 to 20 feet of wall between you and uh the outside depending on the section and the level of disrepair um the only gap in that is the you know doorway that you guys entered through to the east okay so that's by far the least secure part of the tower is that doorway. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, technically something could climb up the wall and drop down on you guys, but it would have to climb a 15 to 20 foot, you know, stone wall and do that. It's so. a shadow fell. Nothing's yeah, ever safe. Is that foreshadowing? But... <laughs> show us, show us for, the sap lock. That's foreshadow felling. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, guys, I gotta go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. I right. didn't sign up to be attacked like this. So Elias is taking and both taking and not taking the first watch. Um, anybody oh, else? Uh, mean? It means he said he'd take the first watch and then promptly went to sleep like he does. I'll take the first watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take second. All right. Tethra volunteers to, to take a watch wherever you like for her. So if we're doing the traditional four man watch and Elias is an asshole and sleeps, then. Uh, you know, she can take third or fourth, whatever Hopework doesn't want. I, I need yep. this rest. Third is fine by me. That's how I'm so right. amazing during the day. If I take last watch, my vignette You're doesn't back. make any sense anymore. <laughs> That's right. I, I did read it. I forgot I forgot some of the details. I know you were, you were talking to one of your ancestors who apparently is more fun than some of the other ancestors, if I remember correctly. It seemed like he was more of a fun guy than Borg, at least. But, uh... Yeah, you know, Borg spent most of his life in the Underdark. He's not the most sociable guy. Yeah. Yeah, he got murdered by a Dark Elf. That sucks, you know? <laughs> Surprised he wasn't, like, stricken from the, the Clan Stone after that shit. Hey, man. That's a warrior's life. It's true. Oftentimes, you get murdered. It's true. He, he did have a pretty heroic death. I spent a long time writing up that unnecessarily flowery... Uh, I don't even, I don't remember exactly which part of the Underdark we, we found Borg's stuff in. Was it in the Dark Elf Fortress? It, it, was, it was in the Under Elf Fortress. It was, I think, between the Dark Elf area and the Duergar area, because like, he was definitely killed by a member of that uh, Dark Elf faction mm -hmm. um, who you guys uh, murdered later. But, uh, yeah, he was killed by a, a sword you guys actually have in your group loot, Viper Bite. But... Regardless, uh, yeah, anyway. So you guys uh, settle down for the, well, evening, perhaps? It's hard to tell here, as uh, it doesn't really seem to be much of a sense of time or uh, any celestial bodies to track the passage of. 
Um, oh, just, really? There's no sun or anything? Nothing. There's no sky, no stars. It, there's just black emptiness above the ground, essentially. Uh, so you, if, you can, uh, if you can call that a, a sky, then there's that. Yeah, really the only defining features that you've seen uh, above ground level uh, is indeed the floating castle and the lightning storm surrounding it, which uh, you suspect is not a natural occurrence within the Shadowfell, based on everything else you've seen. So is there no natural light? No natural light. Is there like a Just the light of your personality? Of illumination. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, because you figure, how can there be shadows in the complete absence of light? But uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just it's one gigantic shadow. We just you haven't traveled far enough to find the light. There you go. That's what Regardless, let's spend four hours talking about this. Um, Descartes said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. This is the shadow so. fell. We only quote niche here. Uh, guess, are we skipping the, over Socrates? I, I feel like we need best, to take this. Best I can beginning. do is Heigl. Heidegger, maybe. I don't even know these names. My my, uh, my favorite philosopher uh, hails from the Helmhorn clan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with him. Uh, it's one of your ancestors. He was pretty lame. You probably don't know him, but... <laughs> If you ever have a guy oh. show up that like you summon protect detect somebody and he just starts like spouting some bullshit instead, <laughs> it's that guy. He's a bullshit artist. Yeah. And he sounds like Brack from Space Ghost. <laughs> oh god, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brack. Um anyway. So you guys uh settle down and uh try your best to get some rest in this uh horrible place. And uh, you do indeed sleep, but uh, your dreams are haunted by one thing or another. Uh, if you're mad and already figured that out, I guess, then that, that can happen for him. But uh, everyone else is really uh, tortured by uh, thoughts of, of uh, you know, the tales they've learned here and how grim and horrible of a place this is and, uh, that it, you know, really brought these people to uh, do what they're doing. And uh, you So think Elias the... wakes up with a boner. Yeah, I was going to get to that. But, uh... well, congrats, guys. You <laughs> yeah, all have uh, anxiety disorders now. That's just every day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you uh, you rest fitfully, and uh, you know, never you wake feeling not feeling particularly rested, but uh, still healed, and uh, resources replenished. So mechanically rested, psychologically, uh, everyone give me a wisdom saving throw. Yes, I fucking love this one. Which you guys have been mysteriously all crushing so far. Hey, that's a three. <laughs> It's not mysterious for me. I am very wise. Hey, that's a... 15. Okay. 21. I can't do math, guys. So we're just... I click at the button. Why didn't I do it? Uh, I, I do not know this. Looks Doesn't the player's there. handbook say you have to pass Calculus 2 in order to play D&D? Not in 5th edition, they got rid of that actually. Best I can do is pre-cal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely some of the uh, previous editions, but... I can show here. you my masters in creative writing though, do you want to see that? Yeah, in 2nd edition you had to know subtraction. Oh, okay, it's like taco. bouncing up behind it. I was like, what the hell is this doing? Not just subtraction, but you had to know how to cross-reference tables. Um... Ew. That's like linear know. algebra. <laughs> All, right. All I know from a uh, second edition is that they had some dope ass pictures. True story. They do. Um, all right. So, uh, Holbrook, um, you you had double weird dreams last night. So you were were troubled by uh, you know both the uh, despair of the Shadowfell, as well as the uh, visitation of your your ancestor spirit, and uh, it was a little more than your psyche could cope with. Um, you, you're feeling. Well, roll a d6 to find out how you're feeling. <laughs> Surprisingly oh, aroused and wanting to understand why you have a boner. Ah, uh, well, we've, we've, we've been <laughs> here before, but... Uh, uh, we've Holbrook... been in boner territory once or <laughs> twice before. <laughs> this isn't Hobrook's first rodeo. Uh, Hobrook, you are indeed uh, feeling Not his very... first hog tie. <laughs> very apathetic again like you just really can't help the situation here <laughs> you see what's been going on presumably for the last thousand years or so and just realize how small your role in all this is 
and uh, oh, you're having again, a midlife. You're, you're feeling very apathetic towards everything and uh, in everyone. Uh, mechanically, you have disadvantage on death saving throws and on dexterity checks uh, okay. for initiative. But you know, I don't think also, that's good. Also sadness. I don't, I don't often make dexterity saving throws for initiative, so I should be good. You know what I Guess, mean. <laughs> Guess what we're going to have to do for the next combat. Uh, you did say he was apathetic, so... He's going to be trudging around, kicking rocks, you know, going off fooey. Stuff like that. <laughs> Alright, Donald. I'm going to need you to take your pants off and put on a sailor hat. You're going to be <laughs> Donald Duck in it. <laughs> Is it... What, it Multiple people landed there. Is Donald Duck the only person who says "off fooey"? I guess, man. I, <laughs> I mean, technically, <laughs> that's not even what I was his going sister for. says it, but you know. Well, well, there you go. That shows. What Dude, I his know. sister is the shit. <laughs> she is quite friggin' awesome. All right, Matt. We'll just pretend you're Donald Duck's sister, and you're good. Her name is Della. You piece of shit. Her name is Daisy. Daisy is his wife. Daisy is his like girlfriend. Oh, all wife. right. <laughs> Jesus. We I'm not from Alabama. Alabama. Man, <laughs> you have more about Donald Duck than I do. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Things I'm happen when you have like, a kid. I have a seven-year-old who was obsessed with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and then the new um, Duck. Uh, it's not Duck Tales. It's, it yeah, it's Duck Tales. Yeah. yeah, the new Duck Tales that is. The new Duck Tales is good. I'm so mad that it's over. We're supposed to be sad, damn it. This is the Shadowfell. <laughs> Christopher. I pulled my power from sadness. This Christopher and Atticus are just like talking about Della Duck. That moon episode, though. Can you guys keep that it down? Song. I'm trying to cry over here. Oh, my God. Oh, cry and derail. Oh, masturbate on your own time. <laughs> Elias groggily eats a pickle. He's very confused. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what the heaven is going on down here? The the pickle helps rejuvenate you and clear your mind <laughs> with its uh, I don't know, pickliness. And the acidity uh, really comes through. You, you have a slightly easier time grasping what's going on now. <laughs> Only slightly though. Probably need more pickles. There's always room for more pickles. So Tethra raises an eyebrow at you and says. Uh, well, as uh, wonderful as I'm sure those are, perhaps we should be on our way. Yes. I haven't eaten yet. Would you like a pickle, Hobrook? You're busy masturbating, I guess. <laughs> um, I guess Hobrook will eat a, a dry ration. Ooh. Yeah. Two cool I do eat MRE. Too sad for pickles. That's okay. Pickles, pickles are for like a happy. <laughs> pickles occasion. are a happy yeah. snack. <laughs> he realizes that, that slight burst of joy as he bites into it is fleeting and won't change anything. So why bother? The pickles are. For Takes winners. him back to his to his boyhood. Why do you think you rolled so well on your wisdom save, Elias? Because you've been snacking on pickles. <laughs> the secret ingredient. He's pickle Elias. It's the funniest shit he's ever seen. All right, I'm ready to go. All right, so you but guys I don't have uh, to be happy about it. I've been ready for Hobrook to go too. God damn! It took you four hours to eat. Yep, time for another long rest, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys uh, said about your extended breakfast of uh, pickles and dry rations, and uh, you know, tend to your your morning routines, and uh, soon enough are are ready to. Uh, Get on your way back to Mar Daniel, or you know, I don't. If you want to go somewhere else, that's on you. Um, your uh, six-legged mounts are not uh, not far from here. I believe you guys left them back a little bit in the forest. Um, they appear to have been uh, well enough trained by the Shatterkai that uh, while you have a hard time seeing exactly where they are, they have not disappeared because they're displacer pieces. I thought it was because they're really dark. Could be both. Well, you can't just say that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tethra leads you back to them, and she helps uh, Zile up into the uh, the saddle on hers, and they ride a uh, double on that one. And he still appears to be, uh, despite the long rest, not have quite uh, 
you know, benefited it from it the same as a PC would, and it appears to still be in fairly rough shape. Well, shall we be going? Absolutely. Lead the way. Hobrook shrugs yes, I and tries to mount his uh, beast. Whoa, bud! <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, since you made a point of it, give me an animal handling check. <laughs> Just oh, me. I got myself good with that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you know, uh why, why not everybody give me one? Why not? Uh, uh, can I pass on that? Uh, I mean, if you roll high enough, sure. Animal. And yeah, animal. I want to take 20 on this roll. <laughs> hey, your dice touched my dice. It's a 19 now. Oh, nice. Hey, did everybody hear that sound effect, by the way? Yeah. Nice. Wow. I guess, uh, when you roll a 20, that... That happens now. Was that something you had to toggle on, or is that default? It's, it's in the settings. You can add special effects to your die rolls. <laughs> uh, Ooh, what, what did it sound? Because I am not hooked up to the sound of that. Oh, man. But, I, might, uh, I might have to uh, add I was kind of hoping this. it made, like, a boy-yo-yoing sound. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be, like, a womp womp for a one or something. Elias yeah. just, like, hops up, swinging a leg over like he's done it a million times before, and looks over at uh, Hobrook, raising an eyebrow. Yeah, uh, yeah. pretty much everyone manages to uh, get into their saddle okay, except for uh, the dwarf, who, uh, it seems <laughs> that the, a good the animal you, can, uh, fuck can, day. Can, can sense his, uh, his uncertainty, and... Uh, Is it already that just, time of uh, year? <laughs> ...continues to, like, kind of walk away and, and swat at uh, Hobrook's uh, arms as he reaches for the, uh, the bridle uh, and, and, you know, the saddle to hoist himself up and kind of swats it away with a tentacle, and... Uh, Hobrook, you're left feeling, uh, where it swats you, like, feeling a uh, tingling in your arm. Like, uh, you know, oh, that's a heart attack. Yeah. Uh, probably having a heart attack. But, uh, uh, after, after a few minutes of struggling, and, uh, you know, your companions watching you struggle, uh, and the elves, uh, giving you very judgmental yeah. looks. Uh, Every, Tephra, one in five men! <laughs> Tephra hops off her saddle with a, a loud sigh. <laughs> and comes over to assist you and holds the beast still and it uh, allows you to get into place but uh, gives you a sharp look as you do so and uh, I avoid her gaze she says we do not have time for this come on and uh, yeah. she gracefully leaps back into the saddle and uh, of hers and uh, begins to lead the way back following the, uh, the dead ground alright so you guys uh travel on for, for some time. Again, uh, the passage of it, it's pretty hard to track here. But uh, you feel as if uh, at least a few hours have passed when uh, you start to move into an area of uh, uh, fog starts to build up. You know, it's not much at first, but uh, it seems to grow thicker very quickly. Um, you know, within the span of maybe uh, 20 yards or so, it went from, uh, you know, a light fog to pea soup I can't barely see through. And it's to the point where, uh, you know, if you hold your hands in front of your uh, your face, uh, you can you can make it out, but you can't see your companions around you, and you struggle to even see the ground from your your high vantage point atop the mount. And uh, you can still hear each other, and you know you know that you're uh, generally close to each other, but you're really uh, walking blind at this point and uh, not seeing much of a you know any break in the fog from your current vantage point that you've uh, got into very quickly. Is there anything you guys uh, want to do, or you're just going to press on, continuing to to follow the sound of Tethra in front? We should stay All the sound. We should stay close. Maybe I'll hold on to a rope or something. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm just gonna say, um, I'll take my um, rope and I will tie it around uh, myself, and then I'll toss it over to um, next person I can see of our group. Okay. Uh, yeah, you really can't see anybody, but you can hear the sound of uh, you know their breathing. Or cursing, or uh, the the soft footfalls of the large displacer beasts. So you do have a That's general sobbing. case. Then I'm going to focus for the dwarven curses. Okay. Yeah, no, you I'm, might. I'm, I'm sobbing, not cursing. The dwarven sobs, whatever. Well, there you go. Uh, regardless, the the sounds are are unrecognizable. And uh, yeah, you, you toss a rope in that direction, and um, Hobrook, you uh, you feel something. Uh, hit the, the neck of your, your mount and then slide forward uh, brush up against your saddle 
Hire okay, yourself is down. Rope? Uh, yeah, you reach out for it, and uh, you can't see it exactly. Like you can barely make out the end of the saddle horn uh, from where you are. But uh, you know, you grasp past it a little bit, and yeah, it uh, it is the end of a rope that appears to have been thrown to you. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, Atticus told me to, to tie myself to it, so I'll I'll do that and toss the toss the rest of the rope behind me. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right, so you guys uh, toss the rope about to each other, and uh, a couple times it takes a you know a few attempts to uh, get the rope to your target. But uh, after a, a few minutes of uh, coordinated effort, you manage to uh, link up with each other uh, with this rope, and you're you know traveling pretty close together. Um, who's holding it, and who's actually uh, tied into it? Uh, oh, Brooke, I. You said you were tied into it. Uh, is that your intent? Uh, and how about everybody else? I will be holding it. You know, it. actually, it might make sense to just hold it rather than tie. Yeah. I'm reconsidering my action. Yeah, Elias was just going to hold on to it. Hands the off the chest piece, Matt. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Alex, how about you? Um, I'm still going to tie it, but I'm actually going to tie it... To, well, what I thought originally was, like, tying it to the, uh, the saddle, essentially. Okay. Yeah, you can certainly do that. All right. So everyone else uh, has a grip on it. You've tied it to the the saddle horn. And uh, nevertheless, you guys are all linked. Uh, you did notice that uh, whoever was last or uh, attempting to throw it forward there, um, you can no longer find Tethra. Um, in the, uh, the scramble to get yourselves connected... Uh, it seems as if you're, uh, you have lost track of her in the thick fog, and uh, the, whoever's in front now, their mount has just been moving forward along its course uh, of its own accord, it seems as if. You don't know for how long, necessarily, but uh, you, you no longer hear her, uh, her beast, and you know your attempts to hit her with the rope are unsuccessful. Can I make a perception check? Uh, yeah, you're just trying to, to look, listen... Uh, yeah, just kind of listen out for for her, see if I can't get a good handle. 15. Uh, you... Yeah, you uh, strain yourself uh, against the silence for a moment and uh, really try to pick apart the different sounds. And uh, you do distinctly hear the sounds of four different sets of uh, footfalls from these creatures and the breathing of your companions, but you hear and see no sign of your Shatterkai, Shatterkai guide. Mm, we should halt before we get ourselves lost. Uh, Elias. Can I make an insight us. check about how fucked we are? <laughs> uh, Elias, can uh, you uh, hover uh, above the fog? <laughs> I. Uh, Elias will... He's still going to hang on to the rope, but he's going to start hovering up. Hopefully the rope has enough slack. See if he can get up above the fog. Okay. Uh, yeah, you fly up, and uh, you feel like you're flying for quite a distance. Um, to the point where uh, you don't really feel like you've even, you know, perhaps even been this high before, and you still have not been able to reach uh, outside the fog. Uh, it seems to extend as high as you rise, and you estimate, you know, it's hard to tell without seeing, but uh, you guess you've risen at least 100 feet already. Mm. He'll float back down. That's a long rope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, well, for... carrying four saddles with him. <laughs> yeah, perhaps you, you let go, or uh, we're going to have to. Uh, I don't I, know. I mean, even like. Maybe, 50... maybe we took more than one rope together. Everybody make a dex saving throw. No. <laughs> um, really doesn't want to I knew he'd work so, it in somehow. So e even if it's like <laughs> a 20 feet or so, that's pretty extreme for ordinary fog. Um, so he, he floats back down and reports uh, the fog seems to extend upwards uh, in unnatural excessive amounts. Um, oh. Don't we have an item in our bag of holding? Um, a decanter of wind or something? I believe you guys do have an endless bag of wind, or at least that was acquired at some point. I don't know what became of it. I don't know if 
it would do anything here, but we I think we have a lantern of true sight also. Bottle of endless wind. Okay. Well, let's yeah, let's start with that. Uh, Elias pulls that out and uh, uncorks it, trying to see how far away he can blow the fog from the group. There's a joke here. I know there is. Elias bends over and sticks it between his legs. All right, uh, Elias, you uh, pull the cork or uh, whatever it is on your on your bag or your flask. I forget what you said. And a uh -huh. uh, strong breeze begins to uh, push out from the mouth of it. And uh, somewhat to your surprise, it actually does seem to be uh, parting the uh, fog directly in front of you. And uh, you hold it forward for a few moments, and uh, it disperses enough of the fog in front of you that uh, you can see uh, something actually uh, directly ahead. The sides are still fairly obscured. But uh, directly ahead of you appears to be a large figure. Um, you can't make out too many features. They're probably about 30 feet ahead of you. But uh, they appear to be standing, uh, waiting almost, with their arms crossed. And uh, you see there's a ripple of, uh, lip ripple of water on the ground next to it. Uh, you guess so, anyway, just from the, the movement there as the uh, wind pushes across it. And uh, as, uh, as you uh, lock eyes on it, a booming voice calls out from that area. And it says, uh, Greetings, heroes of Eris. I bring a message and from the Prince of all genie, Grej Garibaz. Oh, fuck. Fucking right. great. Spit it Go out. Go on! It uh, begins to approach. I shoot it. <laughs> I dismount. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, you uh, jump down off your mount. Does anybody else follow suit, or are you guys, the rest of you, uh, staying up? Uh, yeah, I don't know how to do uh, riding combat, so I'll, I'll hop down. Do we have a cavalier in the party? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God, I, I, I hope not. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is their one chance to shine. <laughs> <laughs> and they've been waiting so long for this. <laughs> He like, oh, cast a spell that killed the animals immediately. Yeah, you look down and it turns out you also lost your mounts in the fog. It's <laughs> they displace. <laughs> you, you thought you were riding something, but it turns out you look down and you're just holding a couple of coconuts. Uh, you don't know how it happened. but uh... <laughs> Oh no, I know exactly how that happened. We got very drunk. <laughs> Perhaps they were brought here by some sort of swallow. Um, Alright, I am going to move us... Oh, I guess I don't have to do anything. Um, yeah, so you uh, dismount as this, this uh, creature approaches, and uh, it closes about ten more feet. So it's standing about twenty feet in front of uh, in front of you, Holbrook, um, and it's just looking at the group and regarding you. And it says again, "I bring a message from Grej Garibaz. He bids me tell you that your king, Cardarian of Eris, has fallen to Raz's influence and betrayed his people." The castle you refer to as Hammond's Holdfast has fallen, and many are dead. The remaining forces of Eris are now being commanded by Lord Orlan Bale of Brielle, an acquaintance of yours. And he is very desperate for your aid. Lord Grej Garibaz bids you return home to the Material Plane to help your allies, where you can truly make a difference and cease your pointless quest here in the shadows. I have means to transport you back. Bring you anywhere you wish in the material realm. Can I make a... I don't know what the equivalent check is, but uh, check to see if he is full of shit. <laughs> That's Motov. Is this Even a humanoid a... figure? Well, there's no, like, there's... Yeah, I would, like, my first thought was sense motive, but is this an insight check? So you can do an insight check to see if you can uh, glean any deception from uh, their their message there, um, and uh, you're not really able to pick anything out. But this also is a pretty strange creature. Uh, it is humanoid, but it is by no means human. Uh, it stands about nine feet tall, and uh, as it gets a little bit closer, uh, it's still hard to see. But uh, its skin looks rough, almost rocky, 
and uh, it has a uh, long hair, and it, it looks more female than male, but uh, it's hard to tell. It looks a little androgynous, but uh, its long hair is a. Uh, it almost looks like braids, but it's like streams of pebbles emerging from its scalp that are tied back behind it. And uh, it holds a very large uh, iron maul in both of its hands, and it wears uh, uh, very nice clothing with uh, elaborate jewelry worked throughout and a heavy gold chain adorned with uh, large emeralds and opals uh, strung across like a bandolier almost. It's very dope. It's, uh, it's an earth genie. I forget what they're called. Oh. Gretch has never been one to send a messenger before. Indeed, but after his last encounter with you, he thought he may react to his uh, appearance poorly. Psst, what was our last encounter with him? You don't Ask remember? Me. Elias, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I just need to make sure, Elias, you know as well. He had the... Me locate some herbs from a pantry and it was difficult given his immense collection and herbs to which I was unfamiliar I attempted to apologize for my previous behavior with him um, <laughs> and then do we need to go back one meeting further uh, you refused Grej Garibas a request he made of you a very reasonable one that would have seen you rich beyond your dreams it was just the tip. Why didn't you say yes? Oh. I, Elias would probably rem remember that, but embarrassingly, I have forgotten. So He, he wanted the staff. He, yeah, he demanded you give him the uh, staff of the Lightning Mage when ah. you guys found it in the Underdark long ago. That's and uh, he, he got pretty worked up and aggressive when you refused. And he did uh, indeed offer you just about anything you could ask for uh, in exchange for at the time. And uh, when you refused... <laughs> He uh, got angry, and he actually took your, uh, what, your Helm of Telepathy? Is that yeah, what you had? Yeah, and and also awesome. the uh, the Grej Gary box uh, back from you guys. <laughs> the Grej Gary oh. box? Uh, yes, so the last time... It's uh, bullshit that you lost that. The last time, <laughs> the last time I met Grej, he uh, insisted I hand over the uh, Staff of Irenicus Faust. Uh, I refused... He attempted to bribe me. I again refused. He took my helm of telepathy and the Grej Gary box. He was very upset. And he thought you Our... might be as well, given how that transpired, but he does not wish you to believe that uh, all bridges must remain burnt. Perhaps there is a, a future there, mending your relationship. Our but he thought it must here... be with us to deliver that. Our mission here in the Shadowfell is, is more critical to the safety of Eris than whatever they're dealing with now at Hammond's Holdfast. You achieve nothing by lingering here. The wizard Vangarath is long since dead. You will find nothing, even if you manage to breach his castle. More die every day back in your home <laughs> as you dawdle here. Your friends die. Do we not require well, I wish we could take it. you at your word. Uh, you tell us the knowledge that we came see seeking, and uh, I don't see why we need to remain. What is it you seek here? The connection between Roz and Grej. No, we want the staff of. Um, Finger on his face. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had. I know, I the, the, I know staff we the staff, but we also learned that uh, right. Grej Garibosh and uh, Roz Modalis, excuse me, Roz, yeah have some connection and it's possible that his power and uh, Roz, uh, may be linked in some way. I think that was tangential to what the reason we're here though. It's a, definitely a curiosity but... The creature pauses and says uh, well I cannot give you that which I do not have but then I see that even reason remains. Reason I, I, it will do you a little good but this connection you speak of is beyond my knowing. Certainly, Grej Garibaz will know. Perhaps he will exchange that information for you and in, in turn for something else. Would we go directly to Grej Garibaz? We can take you wherever you wish, so long as it be on the Take us inside plane. that castle that we're trying to get into. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Doug glares at you and says, uh, you should listen more carefully, little one. I am very average for my race. Don't call me little. <laughs> Good sir. We must respectfully decline. We do require the artifacts for our war against Raz. Well, but you can inform Grish Gary Baz that I do not consider uh, bridges burnt for my part, anyway. He wishes me to extend one final offer to you, perhaps to entice you back to the material realm. There is a spell, one that was once used long ago, to seal Raz Mordalis away for more than a millennia. This ritual is known to Grej Garibaz, and should you return now, he will teach it to you. Since when is Grej so concerned with the well-being of humans? It is not for me to question his motives. I do as I am directed. That is his final offer. He would be wise to accept. What is your answer? I don't answer? think Will we're looking to bargain. I don't think we're looking to be wise. So you shall stay then. It seems our only choice. A uh, wicked grin spreads across a creature's face, and it hefts its maw in its hands and says, I was hoping you would say that. And uh, as it does, there is a uh, burst of movement from the uh, nearby body of water, which I, uh, I mentioned there was some water next to him before. Um, I don't know how well you, you guys had, had mentioned that. Uh, pardon? You had mentioned Wait, is the bottle still going? Um, I guess it's up to Elias if you want to be blowing a breeze at this guy. Providing <laughs> 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 some dramatic wind. Uh, um, no, that's uh, totally cool. But no, uh, that's up to you. Um, I am going to move you guys no. over to a new scene, however, so you can better appreciate the geography here. Oh. I love geography. Hmm. Uh, now you guys are moving over. Okay, there we go. So much math in this adventure. Oh, wait, that's geometry. Never mind. I'm done. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with uh, one of the mods I added. It's just called Porch, and it basically lets me uh, toggle on and off a light source on people. So, uh, uh, Christopher, I got you, got you covered here. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So that is pretty much what you see. Um, as I said, there is a burst of movement from the, uh, the pool, uh, next to this thing. And, uh, another creature rises up out of the center of it. And it's actually, uh, <clears throat> appears to be floating, uh, in midair, about ten feet above the surface of the water. And uh, the top half of this creature, uh, it, it is humanoid, but it looks almost uh, uh, aquatic in some nature, like some sort of strange bloated fish, uh, but stuffed into a, uh, a man's fine silk shirt, and it wears a, a jeweled turban atop its head. Oh, uh, no. Where its legs would start, there is a swirling whirlpool of water that uh, basically reaches down to the pool beneath it, and uh, it regards you haughtily and looks down at you as the uh, other creature readies its hammer. And so that's happening. Since when do you two work together? <laughs> you don't even go here. Rej needs our help on the material plane, and he's willing to kill us if we decline. It's it's your classic dilemma. Genies, man. <laughs> Fucking weird. I'm gonna put a flying thing on that person. I just can't get over how progressive the uh, Shadowfell has become. Earth genies and water genies playing together. <laughs> it's a crazy mixed up place, man. Don't right. tell my granddad, though. He'll... Oh. <laughs> Alright, gents. Let's uh, roll some initiative. Bom, bom, bom. Yeah, Hoberg's ancestors are always shouting all kinds of racist shit all the time, and I just don't tune you, t tune you guys into that. Oh, God. <laughs> I figure I spare you. Oh, man. Shitty roll. All right, oh, I'm right no, back. I'm going down. to uh, fill up my refreshments and use the bathroom before we jump into this. So let me take two minutes, but I'll be right back. That sounds good. You guys want to go with me while I go to the bathroom, Twitch? Twitch, are you down? <laughs> I'll leave it up. I'll leave it up. <laughs> Donos only. Or, or subs only. 
That's okay. It's <laughs> for the gold Patreon level. Uh, yeah, sub chat only, please. This segment brought to you by Coffee in a Gold Can. Coffee in a Gold Can! You gotta shake it first! Is it a gold can? I know it's not carbonated, but every time I have to shake something in a can, I have a tiny traumatic experience trying to open it. Oh. But getting sprayed is the best part. You know, I, I'm not here to kink shame anybody. Matt, are you here? I can't tell because your camera's off for me. Okay, then. I guess that answers that. Matt, keep it off if you're in danger. Oh, my God. Call the SWAT. Oh, God, he's in danger. What's the safe word for this stream? Uh, Leshlight. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, jar of pickles? No, no, we've already used that one. Can't be it. Clawsum. <laughs> yes. This segment is sponsored by Clawson. Clawson, it's pickles in a jar. <laughs> we should, we should get a sponsorship. Of, in the spirit of catching Zach out of preparation, we should have taken the offer. I know, right? Yep. Yep. That would have worked. <laughs> well, that's our stream tonight, guys. <laughs> I would have. Uh, we would have just gone very, very theater of the mind heavy, and also probably cut it two hours short. But still, we would have bullshitted for a little while. <clears throat> but that kind of depends on where you wanted to go, though. You know. <laughs> Eris City. Oh man, you guys have never been there. All right, um, Holbrook, can you give us an initiative roll, please? Oh yeah, sorry. I have disadvantage. You do. Thank you for remembering. Well, I normally have advantage, play? so I guess I just they cancel out. Oh my God, do, I have that pixel? do you actually normally have advantage? Yeah, it's a barbarian thing. <clears throat> nice. When I'm not surprised, I believe I have advantage. All right. Every day that we get to live is a surprise, Brooke. So it looks as if the, uh, the water creature goes first, and the earth one goes last. Alright, let's see. He's going to uh, float forward slightly, uh, still about 20 feet above the, uh, the surface of the water, and uh, really, again, just a whirlpool beneath him, connecting him to the ground. And uh, he's going to consider you guys for a moment, and then... Side, we're not worth his time, and he's just gonna go ahead and leave us alone. Can he Sounds consider like us hostile? Plan. Sarge, can he consider us hostile? 
permission to tweet treat to tweet. Good night, guys. <laughs> permission to treat the combatants as hostile. Always. All right, he's going to start uh, moving his arms in like kind of a strange pattern, almost as if he's like swimming forward, but it doesn't look quite right. But uh, as he does so, uh, the water beneath him grows more and more turbulent. Where's his old boot? And starts to uh, to rise up in waves, and uh, at, uh, it gets higher and higher for a moment, and then it reaches probably uh, about the same height as him, about 20 feet off the ground, when uh, he suddenly just pushes his arms forward and it surges right towards you guys. Uh, you guys are uh, enveloped by a rush of water as it crashes into you across the ground. Everyone give me a strength saving throw. Can I not? Oh, you can... You can uh, you can just take a one if you want. Oh, someone did anyway. Oh, there is a womp womp. Amazing. There is. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, my die clearly says eight. Wow, you guys all didn't do great. I mean, wait a minute. I'm confused by the character sheet. I I think I did a strength check. Not but a not saving a throw. Strength, strength yeah. save. Is yes. the save on the right hand side? Yeah. Uh, yes. A saving throw. Oh. Okay. So okay. It, so it didn't add your proficiency to it. Uh, I'm assuming you're proficient in strength and constitution, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. One would have to imagine. Okay, so with your proficiency, yes, I you get that six pack. additional. Okay. I get an ad additional six to that number. Okay. Nine, Nineteen for me. All right. So really, you're actually the only one uh, sturdy enough to withstand this, as uh, everyone is bludgeoned by the wave. Um, everyone who failed their save takes nine points of damage. Hobrook, you take four. Uh, additionally, everyone who failed, and I'll go ahead and take care of this, gets uh, pushed back 15 feet. 5, 10, 15. What are you right here? Oh. Damn it, Christopher, I said I'd get it. <laughs> everyone right. that failed hey, gets but pushed had back. You consider that pushed I wanted back. Everyone who failed. Uh, so, you, so you maintain your positioning uh, ahead of the rest of the group um, and took less damage. Um, that will do it for him. Oh, shoot, I forgot a detail. Um, everyone who got pushed back and failed is also not prone. Uh -oh. So, yeah. Uh, right. Atticus, it is your turn. You are soaked, uh, flat on your back and bruised. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna use my movement to stand up. All right. And then, I don't know, I feel like uh, Water Elemental is the, the bigger problem here, so I'm going to go ahead and hex him, and then Eldritch Blast. Cheap you. I uh, need to do the Eldritch Blast book. See if I can get this to work right here. Uh... Heck? Is that the right one? No. No, okay. I had to do the weird thing last time. Screw it. I, mean, I just... Yeah, I don't know, because you have your hex thing too, but I know I just clicked on it earlier when I was messing on your character sheet, and it seemed like it rolled okay. There we go. I, I, yeah, yeah, I have to click on the... Well, I, you say that, but I only saw the two rolls. Hmm. Well, that looks, that looks good to me. The format seems right. So, either way, 28 or 29, that hits. So let's just go with that. Uh, and your damage looks like it's calculated correctly. So well, but it's supposed to be three different blasts. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's three different beams whenever I do Eldritch Blast. No, I know. So why don't you just click it yeah, I'll throw another one two more in. times. Okay. I mean, it's fair enough. Uh, honestly, I, I kind of Oh, prefer... I see what it's doing now. I gotcha. Yeah, I kind of prefer that you got to click it three times then, because you can target different people with these two. So, you know, if you blast one and kill them on the first blast, you might want to... That's strategy. Over. So, all right. So you send a barrage of uh, three eldritch bolts towards uh, the floating water creature, and uh, each one of them connects with it. And it, uh, when they hit it, um, there's like an impact to it, and there's a splash of water that seems like it blasts out from its body, as if like this thing is actually uh, made of water in some way. Yeah. Um, so there's the hex. Just so it's there. Okay. And that's an additional 3d6, if all three hit. 
2e6, is that 3d6? Yeah. There. 12, yay. So that's all I can really do. For now. Alright, so 12 plus 14, so 26 plus 13, 39 plus 7, 46 damage. Alright. Nerf Atticus. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, it does not. I'm beautiful. Does not appear pleased by that uh, barrage of attacks, and uh, indeed, you see its eyes narrow and focus on you as it uh, readies its next assault. Um, that said, anything else, sir? Uh, I know you stood up. Do you want to move at all? Your uh, I thought getting up from a prone position was an entire move action. Half of your move speed. Oh, if that's the case, I will go ahead and move. To measure. Just over here a little bit. Grabby. Grabby. There. So we're not all grouped in a single bunch again. Sure. Okay. Uh let's see. Mr. Helmhorn, it is your turn. Yeah, Hoburk will um take his axe off his belt and uh, charge in against the earth elemental. Quite the messenger you are. Some bitch. <laughs> He'll go ahead and uh, work himself up into a rage as he's charging. And... Um, yeah, he'll bring, bring Homework's song. Oh wait, oh no, sorry. Oh yes, Hoberg's on. I've got to adjust my AC. I'm not holding my shield. Uh, bring Hoberg's song around twice to uh, bear on this Earth Elemental. See what kind of damage he can do here. All right, now yeah, let's hear it sing. Uh, reckless. Uh, why did it roll? A oh, never mind. Yeah, uh, I don't think it rolled advantage there. And as oh. a reminder to you guys. Um, uh, if you shift click on a roll, it will automatically roll with advantage. If you control click on a roll, it will roll with disadvantage. Additionally, you can add that on after the fact. If you uh, if you like, don't click it like right now. Uh, Matt could actually look at his attack, and uh, if you mouse over it, you can add a plus. There's a plus sign or a minus sign, and that will basically leave it roll with advantage or disadvantage as well. Yep. So I think that's the first attack. Twenty six to hit. Yep, that'll do it. Your uh, axe bites into its uh, earthy flesh, and uh, yeah, it appears to be made of dirt and rock, more or less, as you cut into it. Uh, chunks of dirt actually fall off of its body, and it snarls at you. And uh, that's not all, because uh, the axe is coming around a second time. All right. Uh, 19. All right, that's a second hit as uh, Hobrook Song bites into the uh, meat of its uh, left arm. And uh, yet again, more earth seems to fall away from it and leave a large gash in its place. Yeah, and uh, numerous ghostly dwarven warriors are uh, also... Screaming racist shit. Uh, <laughs> as previously screaming, discussed. Screaming racist shit at the earth elemental and dis distracting it from attacking anyone else. <laughs> Brace like, I'm sorry, they're very old. They're dead now. Gotcha. It was another time. All right. Let's see. Oops. At least they're That's not yelling me. at Elias Got it. this time. All right, Christopher. Uh, you're up. You are drenched, bruised, and on your back uh, next to your, some of your companions. The uh, I, I creatures you, you fight are just outside your uh, the range of your vision, but you can see Holbrook slashing at the darkness, so you assume there's something there. All right. I will stand up. I'll move. Um, and now I can barely see that guy, so we will we will cast guiding bolt. We'll do it at level. One. I don't know why it rolled advantage. I, I don't know what happened rolled. there. I'm pretty sure God you damn. didn't get a 43 to attack. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I don't you, know why it rolled. 
two but dying. You can figure that one. But uh, no, I think that's right. Um, <laughs> so it looks like you're guiding bolt might have a special thing. On the first one, I think. Yeah, How I think guiding I bolt work. Um, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't uh, do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's just a regular attack roll. Um. All right. Well, seventeen plus your spell attack bonus. I have to imagine it's going to be like plus nine or something, probably. It is. So, uh, yeah, twenty-six to hit is going to do it. So All go right. ahead and uh, roll the resolution of that spell. Uh, will this work? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that worked. Is that is that what it's supposed to be? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So you uh, conjure a, a beam of. Uh, blinding white radiant light uh, that sails out of your hand like a laser and strikes this thing in the chest and uh, it almost hurts your guys eyes uh, to behold it in this dark place it's such a stark contrast but uh, the creature doesn't seem to enjoy it either as it grunts in pain and uh, withers slightly at the, uh, the beam's touch next attack roll will have advantage oh cool alright anything else Christopher no, that'll be it. Elias, it is your turn. Elias hops to his feet and briefly glares at the uh, scaly manfish. And he his eyes roll back and he kind of begins to glow with his eldritch power as he holds this thought of a hot, dry desert in his mind with a searing sun and absolutely no moisture whatsoever. And then he points at the merit and says... I banish thee. And he casts yeah. banishment. He casts Eldritch Blast. Which, I'm, I'm clicking and nothing's happening. What the heck? I feel like Hoburg has seen Elias cast his spell so many times. A few more and he'll be able to cast it himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh... All right. 18 charisma save. Yup. Oh, damn. It uh, grins at you. It says, You think you have more power over traversing the plains than I? <sighs> Bitch, you thought. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Elias just sets his jaw and glares daggers at this thing. That's all he can do this round. We'll make an attack roll for the daggers. I wish. <laughs> Alright. The Dao uh, looks around and uh, seems to look past Hobrook and his eyes settle on Elias and Atticus uh, back in the, in the distance. And uh, it reaches its hand out and then kind of just raises it like he's just lifting something into the air. And as he does so, uh, walls of stone spring up from the ground uh, around Elias and Atticus, and they rise up uh, 10 feet into the air and then uh, begin to converge on each other and seal them in. And uh, suddenly you guys are locked in a small box of darkness, um, totally encased in walls of stone. Uh, I will draw that for you moment Elias did you bring a shovel <laughs> this is this is new yeah that's like the kind of ability that players use is the DM allowed to do that stuff <laughs> check the rules yeah I decided uh, gloves are coming off today I've I've been reading some uh, interesting chat messages and I've I've been trying to I don't know <laughs> can consider them a little bit and see uh, maybe I can incorporate some of those principles into my game not all not the ones that would require more work but um, <laughs> you know the ones that I can just do like this uh, we're, we're gonna spice it up a little um, all I right. think the best part about this is now Twitch can't see any of the map mm. are we on Twitch right now yeah yeah. Brian's Twitch or yeah, my Twitch. Okay. Um, we have one viewer. <laughs> All right. I should have put my hot is, tub is up. Is it one of us? It's probably, it probably is. one it's, of us. 
It's me. <laughs> it's not me, but uh, I don't want to deal with this too much. Um, the Merit uh, shoots a glaring uh, look at the Dow and says, uh, That one was mine! And appears to be referring to Atticus, um, having called him out previously. <laughs> but uh, the Dow seems supremely unconcerned, and uh, the Merit turns his attention elsewhere. Um, begins to uh, wave his hands around again, and uh, this time uh, something slides out of the water and uh, starts to take shape. And it's almost like a, a amorphous blob that's shifting between a, the shape of a tidal wave and vaguely uh, humanoid uh, characteristics. Just a sec here. Uh, additionally, um, that wave that came out uh, last turn that knocked you guys down, uh, it uh, surges forth again. Uh, after this creature slips out of the water, um, begins to rise again in kind of pulsing waves, and eventually, again, reaches a height of about 20 feet and surges forward. Um, and it's pretty much, I guess I can draw the, uh, the area of it a little bit. It's pretty much it's going. a new wave? That was si that's similar, or the same wave, like, turned around or something, or what? It's, uh, basically, it, it's, yeah, the, so the water that rushed out before, uh, after it knocked you guys down, uh, unnaturally receded back into the pond, and, uh, then began to build the stuff up again, uh, pretty much instantly. And, uh, by the time it re was the marriage turn again, it had, uh, essentially reached that, uh, peak again, to the point where it surged forward. Um, gotcha. And you can see uh, it surges forward again, and uh, the the two in the the box are protected, but uh, Christopher and Holbrook are uh, struck by the wave once again. Uh, both of you, please give me a strength saving throw. Oh, that's better. Yeah, I could do this all day. Oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, so you guys both actually make your saving throw, and uh, this wave uh, didn't quite have the, uh, you know, the strength of the last one, despite being equal in height. And uh, you both only take one point of damage and maintain your footing. Uh, it certainly isn't comfortable, though, and uh, doesn't make the battle any easier. Um, but that's it for now. Uh, Atticus, it's your turn. Uh, although you are locked in a completely dark box with Elias, you can see perfectly and so can he, because you guys are weird. But, uh, yeah, what do you do? Dimension door. Ah. It's a good there, Kim. Cast the spell. <clears throat> do the thing. Why is it rolling damage, dice? <laughs> good. Dimension door did 11 damage to... How, what? Whatever. Damn. Um, I'm literally just gonna move over to the ping. Where's the ping one? You got it. Yeah, right, yeah, right there. Because I remember there was nothing there, and Dimension Door is boop boof. Uh, actually, as I'm going to, before I do that, uh, reach out to Elias and say, "Come with me." Come with me if you want to live. Elias. No, just uh, come with me. <laughs> Elias wills himself to come with Atticus. Cool. <laughs> I don't want to, but fuck. <laughs> All right. Okie dokie. He's googling how to kill warlocks. <laughs> how to ASAP. kill twinks. Just throw more than one encounter a day and they run out of spells. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, we right. still have Eldritch Blast. I was looking... No, I was looking up the mechanical differences between uh, light and heavy obscurement. But, uh... Yeah. How does obscurement work in in fifth edition? Is it still like a percentile chance to miss, or is it disadvantage? No. So light obscure is a uh, disadvantage on perception checks. Um, heavy obscure is you, you you're straight up blind, uh, so you suffer from the blinding condition. Um, so you guys were essentially heavily obscured before. Um, once the dialogue started, 
the fog began to part uh, a bit, not completely. So it's a uh, light obscurement right now in the uh, general area of the battlefield. So you guys can see well enough to fight, um, but not make out like fine detail pretty much. Um, so, Dimension Door. Yes, you cast that spell, and uh, you visualize a place uh, to the east of the uh, box you are currently trapped in. And uh, you have asked Elias to join you. Uh, Elias, if you want, I'm going to let you use your reaction to uh, join hands with uh, um, Atticus and uh, tag along on his spell, if that's what you want to do. Definitely. Okay. All right, yeah, oops, I'm still drawing. I have the wrong thing selected. <laughs> Otherwise, All I'm right. going to have to polymorph myself into a mole. <laughs> Alright, yeah, you uh, work your magic Atticus and uh, conjure a uh, door in thin air uh, before you, uh, or, you know, a portal resembling one, and uh, you and, and Elias step through it to emerge uh, more or less where you were had intended uh, a moment later. Cool. Then I'm going to burn some sorcerer points. Um, oh, now we can see these things. Uh, and it was the Earth Gin essentially that put us in the box, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, he's gonna yell over at him. You don't put baby in a box, bitch. And then he's going to cast magic <laughs> missile at the other one because <laughs> I think it's funnier. <laughs> a little psych out there. It's like fine. I don't like that guy. Go for it. Where's my the magic missile? Fifth level at the one that is hexed, and it does. Oh, because it's gonna make me do it. Okay. <sighs> All right. I don't like that method. We're gonna do a different method. How many darts? Oops, that's three. Yeah. Okay, so that's eight, eight D four plus eight. And I'll do that first. Eight D six. Damn. <laughs> All right. So twenty eight, twenty nine. So that's fifty seven. Yep. Jesus. And then, since I still have my movement, because yay. I'm going to move over to here. Okay. I don't like everybody being in one box area to get put in boxes. No more boxes. <laughs> Alrighty. Jeez. No more babies. Well, yeah, the uh, the Merid was a uh, burst of uh, puddles as your uh, beams of or beads of light sank into his flesh and uh, your hex took root. And, uh,. Appears very displeased, and uh, although a little bit happy that you are back in sight, and now he can attack you. So, uh, silver lining. Uh, Holbrook, your turn, sir. You are still toe to toe with this Dao, and uh, you sense the presence of some creature behind you, though, and see a large wave taking the form of a man, somewhat, uh, looking ready to engulf you. Okay, uh, the grid lines are really light. Am I in melee range of the the elemental, the water elemental? Uh, no. If you step five feet to your right, you will be. Okay, I'm going to duck and weave out of this tidal zone that I am apparently standing in, uh, perhaps stepping between this earth elemental's legs and uh, moving to the other side of his, his body mm -hmm. as I... Uh, as I uh, continue my attack with the uh, Great Axe. So, a couple of reckless attacks. Oops, I forgot to hit advantage again. Wait, it didn't even register. Here we go. 
Uh, 17. Slap the side of Hubbrook Song with its maul. Alright. Second one is a 27 to hit. Uh, does not slap the side of Hubbrook Song with its maul. Oh, yeah. Alright. <laughs> yeah, your uh, axe finds a path past its defense and uh, bites into the flesh of its uh, upper thigh and uh, grimaces in pain as it knocks away a chunk of dirt. All right. That's it for me. Okay. Ah, I need to type better. Uh, Christopher, it is your turn. You uh, have maintained your footing after the last wave, but uh, yeah, still standing in the splash zone. What do you want to do? Uh, let's see, I will move here, because now I can see everybody, and I will cast, uh, fire, what? <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, fire well, what? Ah, uh, yes. I'll cast Firestorm. Um, and... Uh, up to 10 10 foot cubes so like over here uh, zoom out over here and then over here and I guess if they can't make a DC 18 save they take 29 damage let me just uh, let's see if we can find a path that hits all of them I mean, it's up to 10, 10 foot squares. I can place them anywhere. Yeah, but they have to be adjacent to each other, right? Nope. One, no? I don't think so. The area of storm, uh, uh, which you can arrange as you wish. Yeah, oh. but the next sentence is uh, each cube each must cube have must at least have... one. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Cube. That said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think you can just pull it off. Um, so yeah, I think you can uh, arrange it in such a way that you can strike all three of the uh, opponents that are before you right now. So uh, I assume that is what you're you're aiming to do. Yes. All right. Then uh, we'll let you we'll let you have that one. Just barely close enough. All right. So they all get a chance to make a dexterity saving throw here. So give me a moment. That did work. Cool. Whoever rolled the 20, your mom's a hoe. <laughs> uh, the Merid uh, had a, was a little bit more mobile than the other two, flying as he is above the water, and uh, manages to evade the, uh, the worst of it. Uh, the other two are fully uh, struck by the, uh, the falling, uh, you know, bolts of flame. In just a sec here. Anything else, Mr. Christopher? Nope. Alrighty. Elias, you are up. Oh, actually, um, oh. what's their HP total? <laughs> <laughs> Lower than it was a moment ago. By at least 16. Uh, by at least 14. That's what I meant, 14. I can math. <laughs> <laughs> um, you told us earlier you could. Uh, I lied. You just have to figure out which time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Elias is going to. He's just like glaring with as much menace as he can muster at the uh, walking tuna, or the hovering tuna, I should say. He's going to place a hex on it. Um, so. And that's and that's just a bonus action. Uh, I'll give him disadvantage on 
dexterity. Check. Right. Wait, you don't do 56 damage with your bonus actions like Atticus does? Um, <laughs> no. Pathetic. Not on this one. Um, but then he will follow that up with a good old fashioned Eldritch Blast. Yeah, it's so old fashioned these days. Uh, two. Oh, oh no. Oh. oh, brutal. Uh, that is, uh, two misses in one hit as you finally get the targeting in and, uh, strike him right in the belly with your third blast and a uh, small ripple of water splashes out from his, uh, his center. As he, uh, regards you coolly, oh. he seems, uh, unimpressed. Plus the, uh, necrotic. Oh, plus the, yeah, that's true. Go ahead and give me that. Oh, that's better, at least. Atticus, you can, or sorry, Elias, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Aye! <laughs> Some performance issues over here. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Alright, anything else, One Elias? One in five. Um, Elias will actually scoot over here to be even further away from his companions. And that's it. Okay. Let's see. Turn A. A. All right, he is going to uh, continue to ignore the dwarf at his side, uh, seemingly largely unconcerned with the uh, little bits of earth that the axe is hacking off of him. And he's going to uh, gesture towards Atticus, uh, who is really just, uh, you know, not even in sight for uh, Hobrook and, and Christopher. But uh, Elias and Atticus, you can see just fine. Uh, the earth directly, actually, I'm sorry, not, not at Atticus, at Elias, I misspoke. Um, so you can't see Elias, I think. No, actually you can't. Okay, anyway. Uh, Elias, the earth uh, directly in front of you erupts. And uh, it seems as if a, uh, a boulder or mountain of some sort is starting to spring up out of the ground directly in front of you. Uh -huh. But uh, after it reaches a height of about uh, nine feet, it stops growing and actually uh, separates itself from the ground. And you realize that uh, an earth elemental has been conjured directly in front of you. Alright. Their turn again. Oops, didn't mean to move him. Alright, just a moment here. I did. All right. Uh, I Christopher. I can't smell it. The uh, large tidal creature, uh, yeah, not too far from like you, you hide, uh, uh, pauses for a moment and then surges towards you in a rush. Like and really it doesn't generic. stop short. It actually yeah. rushes uh, on. Trick scene that's a little happening. Very quick. Uh, it actually sense. surges directly yeah. onto you and tries to envelop you. Uh, it starts to whirl around you like a whirlpool, and uh, you have a hard time moving. Give me a strength check. Uh, I'm sorry, strength saving throw. Six. Yep. Uh, yeah, your uh, tiny halfling muscles, uh, great though they are at making uh, surprise exits, uh, are not quite up to the task of uh, fighting off the uh, strength that this creature possesses. And you are uh, swept up in its waters and being basically battered around and, uh, you know, uh, just totally enveloped in water. Uh, you cannot breathe or speak right now. And, uh, you know, so you'll vet probably drown in about three hours with how uh, the edition <laughs> works. But uh, in the meantime, you are going oh, which to edition? take... I said third edition, didn't I? Yeah, um, you did. Yep, that's the wrong. The third, third edition, I'd be fucked. Uh -oh. Yeah. We didn't tell you, we switched the rules up. Well, that didn't roll damage, so I will just roll it. <laughs> then I need to be way more OP than I am. Uh... And you are indeed uh, grappled by this creature as well. And you take 10 points of damage just from being battered around within it. I'll 
do it for him. Earth Elemental. No. Let's see. It's gonna go for Hobrook. No. That would be silly. Uh, let's see. Is going to reach out and try and grapple uh, Elias. So Elias, go ahead and give me a uh, acrobatics or athletics check. Hey, you hit my dice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, the, the hulking mass of stone lunges at you, trying to envelop you, but uh, you manage to slide backwards just out of its grasp and uh, evade it. Bad touch. Bad touch. Alright. Let's see. You and me, baby, ate nothing but mammals. Uh, it is going to... Uh, well, it's Some not going to roar. Animals. It's an elemental. Oh, but it's animals. going to uh, whip its... Oh, shit. That's a crit. It's going to whip its fist around oh. uh, after it fails to grab you and strike you right in the jaw. Uh, you take 24 points of bludgeoning damage. Yikes. I think Hell should have something to say about that. Uh, that's gonna be a Hellish Rebuke, by the way. <laughs> you bitch! Alright, yeah, it's uh, an connected with you, and there is a uh, flash of flame uh, as uh, you're struck, and it uh, coalesces into a beam and launches itself out directly at it. Whoa. Is that that That's... can't be the right amount of damage. No, it should only be a second level. Why did it? Yeah, work? because you only have the <laughs> level health uh, spell slots, so it's like uh, uh... getting that fucked up. Uh, we'll just take the first two. So eleven. Is that cool with you? Yep. Yep. All right. So yeah, that thing is uh, struck by a bolt of flame uh, in retaliation from its uh, blow to you, and. Uh, does seem a little charred, but uh, as it is made out of rock, you suspect it was not fatal. All right. Uh, now the merit's turn. Let's see what do. He just wants to chill. Probably. He's just gonna kick it. Uh, you know, hang back. Super, super chill. These yeah, things totally. don't okay. don't have long attention spans, so he probably like forgot what's going on. You know, I I can vibe with that. It has ADHD. That's cool. Hmm. Well, you guys are all pretty spread out. That's unfortunate. It's probably all the microplastics we've dumped into the elemental plane of water <laughs> in <laughs> recent decades. <laughs> all right, uh, Atticus. Creature uh, is looking directly at you, and uh, starts to chuckle for a minute. And uh, then it inhales deeply. Ooh. Its cheeks are all puffed out as it does, and then <laughs> just blows forward. But instead of air, a uh, jet of high-pressured water shoots forward directly at you. Make a dexterity saving throw. It's hydro pump. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm going to use that. So add seven. Add seven to what it. Was okay. That? Favor of the gods. They get it once per short rest. What language uh, is it in? Celestial? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Alright, once per short rest? Man, that's not bad. Um, okay. Yeah, it's so, my yeah. for bloodline trait. It is, it is heading uh, directly towards you. Um, when uh, And you were like, oh man, this is going to hurt. It's going to hit me right in the face. When uh, suddenly... Uh, one of those measle creatures that tried to drown you guys in the uh, river earlier jumps out of the tree, uh, apparently trying to uh, ambush you, and instead intercepts the water jet and just gets <laughs> obliterated. Um, however, uh, so it turns into a frothy pink mist. The uh, jet of water deflects off its skull just enough that it sails right past you. And you That's are what also happens in Pokemon every time you miss a Hydro Pump. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's like a Rattata. <laughs> yeah. Horrible collateral damage. Yeah, <laughs> devastating. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the uh, Merid, uh, who had a look of satisfaction upon its face, uh, suddenly blinks in disbelief and uh, swears in an. Well, I don't know. Is it an unknown tongue? Let's see. What, what does? Uh, oh, it doesn't have his. 
I didn't add his languages. No. Oh. He... Let's see. Let's see. I, is there a... Uh... Yeah, Auckland, probably. Let's see. Or Primordial. I forget which one's the alphabet and which one's the language. Uh, yeah, we're going with Aquan, uh, for, for his language, because I did not, uh, do that, because I had to create this character sheet from scratch. But, uh, yeah, if anyone you can read Those that, are Nordic roots. You will, you will oh. know his, uh, his, uh, profanity of choice. Um, give you a hint, it, it rhymes with, uh, Schmuck Falls, but, uh, anyway. Gravity Falls. Got it. Yeah. Let's go home. <laughs> uh, Atticus, uh... Your god, whoever it is, has a uh, Yondala. Sure, Yolanda. Uh, that, that's up to up to Atticus. But their timing is impeccable, as they have sent a uh, innocent little monkey beast to die for you. And uh, as such, you are ready to act and uh, don't have a broken face. What do you do? Well, I feel like I should break his face. So I think I'm gonna do some more magic missiles at my fifth level. On his face. No missile. Go ahead and click the spell over here just to make sure it gets counted. Cast. And I'm going to completely ignore that because that fucked me. Eight. And you're like pretty much just like a fucking machine gun uh, against this thing right now, just like letting round after round fly into this thing, and uh, it's just getting like <laughs> riddled with uh, you know your bolts as you do so. But uh, even so, uh, the creature remains airborne and uh, not defeated, but it cool. is looking uh, ragged and uh, have like a, almost like it's having a hard time keeping itself together at this point. Like uh, you know, it's ragged and piece out, of shit. Uh, when it shouldn't be, as if, like, maybe, uh, water inside was running around a little bit too, uh, you know, too fast or something. Well, that's good to know, because I'll burn some more sorcerer points and do it again. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Can we disable the dice mod for Alex only? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can go in and turn it off. No, and, uh, I'm just kidding. It doesn't uh, bother me. Oops, I definitely... What did I... Do. Oh, I clicked this water by accident. I'm are like, you just trying to cheat? Roll? It's fine. No, I. My keyboard's <laughs> too sensitive. I accidentally pressed the button. He he spent a sorcerer point of his own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a legendary creature now. Legendary action. You can't stop me. There we go. <laughs> That's a good point, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck do it again. Anyway. So forty-seven total damage. Yep. Jesus. All right. What is it that gives your magic missiles extra damage? Is that a sorcerer thing, or a warlock? He's also cheating. <laughs> so the way hex works, oh. is it, you deal an additional one d six per hit. That's why spells like magic missile or um, scor sor scorching ray can be super fucking devastating. Oh, are you gotcha. including uh, Elias's hex as well? No, because it only affects my hex. Uh... Like your hex only. Like if you guys hit it, come on, you don't he's do broken enough already. Six. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can break it further. I have an additional hex that I can do that only I can do that also gets added to it. <laughs> it's like, bro, I haven't even been trying yet. <laughs> no, this is the. I don't want to go only all out yet. <laughs> Oh this man, I can't wait till we get to the beep bag and he just whispers, "I'm sorry, Sensei. I'm gonna have to go all out." Oh God, I'm never gonna do that one. He's gonna gonna take off his training weights and his power level's gonna jump like five times. <laughs> All I'm going to say, you know, when we finally fight Raz, if he has force yes, exactly. immunity, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'm definitely giving him that. Um, <laughs> Surprising if you haven't thought of it already. Dear God, honestly. <laughs> Do you even know it, me? Did, you realize uh, I only prep ahead, like, hours in advance, right? So, uh, you know. <laughs> we'll just write that one down. <laughs> you fool. You think I have a stat block for Raz already? Come on. Actually, I do, but I made it like <laughs> two and a half years ago when we started the campaign, so I'm probably I gonna thought change. I Gary Boss was the final boss. Hey, man, that's open for interpretation. It could be, it could be Brian. I'm actually setting it up for that way. We'll see how things go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jesus, you know uh, what? I, I might have to switch to Atticus, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, he could 
do a heal turn and and pull a, a full um, Arthas on us. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to throw another like wishing hole in front of you and hope for the best. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> you know I uh, I could. Too, too I could like I want to play a druid now. <laughs> Rolls up a druid monk. I'm like oh, I regret this. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea the power I wield. Yeah. Hey Brian, right. your stream is frozen. Oh no. Why? Oh no. Oh my they god. Probably, they, they, they saw me swear in awkward and they censored us. All of the, the you would do Actually, it. we're up to two, so. <gasps> oh, man. Oh. So, which other one of you signed on? I mean, <laughs> still wasn't I'm me. Amazing. So, uh. It Holy could be shit, organic, someone's guys. actually watching us? I mean, not no. anymore, but, uh. We're anyway. <laughs> my, bro uh, my broadcast is reporting some weird stats here. Like a four? Is there a four in there? Well, it said my there's, a, there's a million viewers. There's like an integer or, uh, or something. If there's a million viewers, we get a cut. No, everything was like <laughs> negative, like 500,000 something. Oh man, we're not getting a hype train with those numbers. You need to get your, uh, your uh, swimming pool put together and set that up in your room. Yeah. Pull, pull I'll, uh, I, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to quite pull in the numbers I'll, like Amaranth, I will, but uh, uh, I'll try. I'll go topless for a million subs. <laughs> you heard well, that, folks? I mean, wait, wait, wait. we might get okay. close then. You know what? I didn't know that was on the table. Say it again. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll go topless for a million subs. That's, that's, I mean, that's a lot of subs. Like, I'll go topless for one sub. Ooh. One subs. <laughs> you know, that's kind of an English degree. Now, now I'm really regretting that I actually used my free Prime subscription yesterday. On you can't. Else. You can't oh, use it if they're not a what you call it partner. Partner, yeah. Oh, really? But you have to have a minimum I've amount. I tried of using it on Brian's stream thing. before. I, I've yeah. used it twice before. Uh, one uh, friend that Amber made streaming, and then one literally last night. Um, I was watching uh, a DM uh, who works. <laughs> we lost the other. viewer. Guys. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Oh, <laughs> not not enough D D. Too much to talk. All My right, bad. back back to the events <laughs> at hand. Um, so, the, uh, the Merid floating above the pool is uh, riddled with blasts of energy uh, coming from Atticus and is literally struck 15 times in the space of a couple seconds. Um, and it's just, yeah, like I said before, it's like he's being shot with a machine gun. He's like, <laughs> and uh, on the last one, there is just a uh, explosion and a uh, frothy burst of foamy water. And uh, the thing completely loses its form, and the water falls to the ground, and the uh, surging tidal wave uh, calms down and comes back down. And uh, it seems as if all that remains of the creature is his uh, fine set of clothes and jeweled turban, which uh, fall with a soft plop into the water. How about, how about now, the water bitch. elemental? The water elemental's gone? Water elemental water is not is gone. gone. Okay, that's bullshit. <laughs> I call hacks. That hacks. Show us the stat block. Show us that it says that he, he sticks around. Okay, I think I I think he actually does, but I can I can confirm that. And if I'm wrong, I'm just not gonna tell you. So uh let's see. Ah This is okay. fucking bullshit. It, it's actually it, to get us tonight. If your concentration is broken, the elemental doesn't disappear. I'm not going to read the rest of the next couple sentences, but that's all you need to know. <laughs> so it's going to go crazy and just attack everything because it's basically its own summon at this point in time. Like the demons that Elias used to summon. Who can say? All I know is <laughs> that I, I mean, Atticus's turn is over? Question mark? Yes. I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm done. Thank God. He must have right. sorcerer gonna... points. God, man, it's ridiculous. He just did like 100 damage. Uh, Holbrook, it is your turn. Uh, Christopher is drowning inside a strange flying puddle next to you, and uh, you are still engaged in hand to hand combat with the large Dow. What do you do? I have an axe. And my axe. Yes, it's I have axe, we'll travel. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing my thing. And uh, euthanize Christopher so he doesn't suffer a horrible death by drowning. That's very kind of you. We have like 30 rounds before we have to worry about stuff like that. That's going to be a torturous 30 rounds for him. <laughs> um, but you yeah, I'm going to continue looking for uh, 
Christopher is points rock on this, hard right uh, now. Whatever this is called, a DAO. Right. That uh, <laughs> data, data access object. I, I had just <laughs> switched over to the chat and saw the Gimli. Uh, very nice. Okay. Uh, that was not what I expected to see when I flipped over. So very good. Um, yeah. That that thing you said. Software yep. engineering lingo. I'm I'm up yep. with it. I'm Ooh. hip. That's I'm with it. Ooh, that's why it rolled so many dice. Sweet. Nice. Actually, uh, gotta... Zach, you're supposed to say I'm simp now. They don't say hip anymore. Uh, well, four more rounds of that, and I'll have uh, done the same amount of damage as Atticus. <laughs> You're learning. All right, and that was a crit. Very nice. All right, so 33 damage as Hobart's song arcs out. Uh, will it arc once more? Let's see. Nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> nah, it tried to arc, but then it just plopped and uh, didn't really work out. Uh, however, the first swing was a mighty blow indeed. And uh, I feel like you nearly severed one of its arms, but it still seems to be hanging on. And as this thing doesn't have any bones or muscle, apparently, uh, could have been more devastating. But still, a strong strike. Anything right. else for you, Master Dwarf? Um, does does it have to make a concentration check? Uh, no. It uh, already stopped concentrating. That's bullshit. Ball. That's that's fucking bullshit. I, well, you know what? I guess uh, hold the wall's still there, dude. I can see it. Uh, I forgot about the uh, yeah. It does last a little. I think. Hold on a sec. Let me let me look at his spells actually. Because I think. Uh... Mm, okay. Yeah. It actually uh, crumbled after they escaped, and it conjured an elemental because I messed up. So, we well, get rid uh, of the elemental. Nope, getting rid of the box. What's in the box? Uh, honestly, I okay. really wanted both, but uh, Matt had to rule lawyer me, so now I don't get to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Matt had to ask a simple question. Jerk. All right, what a streamers. Fun. This is fuck you, Zach. This is the uh, Jeremy Crawford Award of the night going to Holbrook. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Yeah, that's it for me, though. Man, you guys asked for, like, a more complex battlefield, and you do everything you can to make it go away as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> You'll You'll take it. We don't easy, actually yeah. want that. What we want is to complain. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it all makes sense now. Uh, Holbrook, are you done for, for now? Or yeah, Do you I'm have any more rules you want to replace to me? <laughs> no, I'm good. All right, uh, Christopher. Uh, Chris, just, Chris despite your teammates' won't. best efforts and yours to despawn this uh, water elemental, you are still drowning. Um, I will uh, make a strength check. Okay. Oh, that was man. an eighteen. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Uh, you managed to uh, wriggle yourself out as the. Uh, the you know tide seems to lessen on one side of it and you just squirt out to the side and uh, pop yourself out wherever you want but that does require your action to do so check out those tiny halfling muscles uh, you said which action did it move my standard pardon which action uh, I yeah. was too busy laughing at your squirting comment <laughs> uh, yeah it just it took your action to escape uh, that said, at the beginning of the turn, before you managed to free yourself, you were battered around a bit more. And uh, you take 16 points of bludgeoning damage. I thought that said on the beginning of Ed's turn. Hold on. Uh, at the start of... E oh, you know what? You're right. Shit. I'm, I read it wrong just now. Okay. Well, never mind. Now I, who's the uh, rule lawyer? Yeah, I'm just getting hit left and right here. You guys are uh, taking me to taking me to town. <laughs> All right, yeah, I guess that's a. Uh, but it I still takes your action, damn it. I guess that's my job. Oh wait, can I do a bonus action? I don't know how many sorcerer points do you have. Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nope, not enough. Clerics need fourteen. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Uh, would you like to move at all, or are you are you happy where you are? Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, I 
I'll just hang tight. Alright. If it's gonna uh, rush me anyway. Actually, actually. Sorry. I will move right here. Alright. Uh, it is going to take an attack of opportunity on you as you go. That's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it forms a, a fist of uh, rushing water and smashes into you, and oh. you take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. You know, if I took 5 instead, I'd have 69 points, and that would be super cool. It would Does be, it do five I'm instead? actually... Hold on, that's still a possibility, because a, a ghostly dwarf is going to jump out of nowhere. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, He's got a, a large tower shield and a spear in his hand. He's going to try and absorb and some And he blood. is saying the W word. <laughs> the W word? I don't know what the equivalent for water elementals were. Wumbo? I Wumbo. I rolled in Dwarvish. Nice. Dang what it. does it say, though? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh. <laughs> That's you awesome. don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> All right. Uh, it prevents 13 damage. Oh damn! How much did it do? Oh, okay. In well. 14. So, nice. uh, yeah, the uh, <clears throat> dwarf deflected most of the fist, but uh, a little bit of the water managed to reach past it and still strike you, but for a pretty insignificant amount. Uh, yeah, and the uh, the ghostly visage of the dwarf fades away after having uh, served its purpose. That was funny though. You you uh, tried to to roll that, and I had the water elemental selected when you posted it, and he does not speak dwarvish. So uh, <laughs> all, all, all all I got were the ruins, and then as soon as I deselected them, it translated it. So it was a very dramatic reveal there for for that. That was uh, that was enjoyable. Um, all right, so right now it's Elias's turn. <laughs> All right, okay, get back. Um, Elias winks at the Earth Elemental and pops a misty step. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I have no available packed magic spell slots. I think it took one for my Eldritch Blast when it shouldn't have. Probably. Follow your hellish rebuke. Oh, or yeah, it shouldn't have taken up my hellish rebuke either. Yeah. All right. Um. So that's a bonus action, and then Elias okay. is going to move another uh, third half feet. Um. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> Jogs around here, and then he's going to Aldrich blast the Dow. There was a crit there, yeah. So we've got uh, two hits, one of them a critical, and one miss. For a total of 24 damage. Yeah, so two of your beams of uh, Eldritch Energy uh, reach their target and strike the Dao and blast off uh, large chunks of its uh, earthy flesh again. Uh, it still stands, but uh, it's starting to look certainly uh, a lot worse for wear at this point as well. Uh, but still determined to, uh, you know, take some of you with it. Anything else, sir? Nope. Elias? Uh, no, nothing else. Okay. Let's see. Alright, now it is his turn. Her turn. I'm gonna test a macro real quick. Real quick. Their turn. Hey, it worked. No, I want you to do it real quick instead. <laughs> well, you guys, pain in the ass with all your little tricks. <laughs> uh... Can you guys just fucking not? All right. 
right, well, limited options at this point, so uh, it is going to uh, roar in frustration and uh, take two massive arcing swings towards Hobrook with its large maul. Well, that one's not going to do it. <laughs> wow. <Ooh. laughs> the double deuce. Wonderful. Nice. Super duper. Fucking yeah. pathetic. Oh, wait a minute. No, hold on. That's uh -oh. one attack because no, he has no, advantage no, because it. you're reckless. Rule lawyered. <laughs> I get one more. Stop it. The curse of Crawford comes back to haunt Matt. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh. Uh, you get smacked for 21 points of damage, half down to 10 because of your stuff. Uh, and, uh, yeah, your ears are ringing, but, uh, it hasn't slowed your rage and desire to chop this thing to bits. But you are gonna have a little bit of a goose egg. A goose egg? Yeah, yeah, you oh, know. A lump on your head. I have some quail eggs. <laughs> Not big enough. This one's a goose egg. All right. Best I can do is duck. Well, that's acceptable. The uh, water elemental is going to scan its surroundings and choose the most vulnerable prey that it can reach. Well, perhaps not, but uh, it's going for Elias. It's going to surge <laughs> forward and zip towards the uh, newly appeared tiefling. Elias assumes it's because he's such a threat, and not because of any vulnerabilities. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, that's he, why he didn't uh, go after Atticus. forms two massive watery fists that uh, launch out at, uh, directly at you. Watch out, Elias! He's gonna fist you! Uh, the first one connects and strikes you for 18 <laughs> no, points of damage. This no. one actually scared you. Ooh. The second one connects as well, but uh, you are already getting knocked backwards by the first, so the force of this one is less. It takes seven from the second. Ooh. Very rude, Krista. Yeah, I have my curtains up behind me, and like, all of a sudden there's a face just peeking through the curtains. <laughs> 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 uh, I didn't see that. I had things in front of my... Uh... Well, no, video you, chat, you but... couldn't see it from where the... And that, oh, that's okay. part of it. If she was going to pop up, I'd expect her to pop up, like, that right side. There. Yeah. Occasionally... Right, you should take notes. That's that's how you create terror in a D and d adventure. <laughs> yeah. People sneak up behind the players. That's true. <laughs> Just text all of our significant others before the next horror <laughs> campaign. And... Yeah. Hey, I need your help. Uh, when, when Amber's streaming, I'll occasionally disagree with her, and I'll, like, Throw uh, like squeaky toys we have for the dog at her head, like from off screen, like while she's going. But uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yes, murder. Um, so the earth elemental, water elemental, struck out and hit Elias twice. That will do it for him. The earth elemental. Let's see. How far is that? Uh, Oops, that's the wrong thing. Did not mean to do that. Let's do this. Uh, too far, you say? Unfortunate. Alright. Earth Elemental is going to sink directly down into the earth and vanish from sight. Yay, I defeated it. That would, that would yeah. count as mine. Good job, Elias. How much you got it. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, God, I'm sorry, man, but we're still on milestone. Zero milestone XP. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it seems like it was pretty ineffectual. All right. Atticus, it is your turn. The Earth Elemental has vanished, but uh, the Dow and the Water Elemental remain engaged with your comrades. Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to go ahead and move the hex over to uh, Ugly Face Man over here with the mall. Okay. And. Uh, uh, that's an androgynous woman. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah, I, thought, I thought we were pretty clear on that, but, you know, if you just want to be disrespectful and rude, I guess that's on you. Uh, I do. I do indeed want to be rude. Can we so. get a mod that we yeah. can put our pronouns next to our tokens? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't. There uh, probably is one. Uh, I'll, I'll take a look next time. 
Yeah, I'll just use Eldritch Blast to pew pew it from over here. Good cancel out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yep, here it is. Player pronouns. Oof. Nice, oh, how really? really? Yeah. Oh, players, yeah. Yeah. For players, it, that makes sense to me. Sure. But for characters. <laughs> All right. So there's those. Oh, then, hit I think 5e has right. a. That is uh, has a section two, for pronouns. Two out of three hits as your first to uh, strike. The I might be thinking of Pathfinder third okay, one. Sales okay. just over it. Yeah, I don't think uh, 5e wow. is that woke. So okay. Well, that's the extra hex damage. Six total damage. Right, so there. you're suggesting that it is in fact broke. All right. <laughs> Anything else for you, Atticus? Mm, no, I'm good over here. All right. I wouldn't be surprised if 6e had it. Watsy likes to to do that kind of thing, but I think 5e is a little bit older than the whole pronoun thing. Well, they, they just yeah, wrecked, I think they, so too. Yeah, true. They retconned the drow today. That was actually like I, a haven't, I haven't had a chance to look at that yet. Yeah, there's uh, three different kinds of drow now. Uh, one of them is the crazy Lolth worshiping Benzo Berenson drow, and then there's some that live in like I think like the mountains to the north, and some that live in like the swamps to the south or something like mountains that. Mountains to the north. And they are not evil, I guess, and yeah. they have other things going on for them. Honestly, I, I I would rather they have just nerfed their skin color and kept the culture the same, but uh, whatever. Um, Evil drow, neutral drow, vibrant drow. Sound yeah, like ma ma make them white. I don't care. Like that's fine by me. Like super albino evil drow, or, or something. Or they can be any color. Who cares? Just like yeah. they live underground and they're evil and worship a spider deity. Like you know, that's their thing. Anyway, not um, anymore. Yep. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I, I probably just lost us any uh, any subscribers we just gained during this <laughs> session. So sorry, we have guys. to stop doing this. <laughs> um, I will take my shirt off. <laughs> no, yes. I'm trying to get so, Holbrook, it is uh, it is your turn, sir. The uh, the creature ahead of you is starting to look uh, a little un unsound as uh, cracks are starting to ripple through its body. And uh, chunks of it seem to be slopping off of their own accord at this point. All right. Well, um, I'm not really a precision type of attacker, but I'll, I'll see if I can add add it onto any of those existing cracks with uh, a couple of swings of my axe here. That's a one. Yeah, the other one. Oh, but not a twenty-four not probably a one, hits. Though. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, that There's one a will definitely hit. Yeah. Could this be it? All right. So, uh, Holbrook, you uh, you lay waste to this creature. Do you want to describe how you do so? Um. Yeah, I imagine just a really hefty swing right down the the center of the thing, and it uh, a fissure forms and crawls all the way up the, the creature's body and it just crumbles in half. And uh, that is exactly what happens. And uh, as it crumbles I knew in it. half, uh, it actually separates further into uh, separate bits of rock and dirt and really completely loses its form. And it just uh, collapses to the ground in a heap of uh, dried earth and rock uh, after having been split and twang cleanly by uh, Holbrook's song. Uh, about not being able to keep your composure, Jesus. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> there's a uh, heavy thud as the uh, large maul falls to the ground, and then a uh, clang as the heavy golden uh, jeweled chain that the creature wore falls on top of it as well. Hmm. All right. Anything else for you, sir? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll. Uh... So the Earth Elemental's out of sight, right? It is. Uh, last you saw, it was to the southeast, and then it just sank into the ground. All right. Well, if uh, helping out Elias is my only option, I'll help out Elias. <laughs> Could always search the pond for more, uh, you know, water genie, just to be safe. <laughs> yeah, I could. Go for but, uh, that always yeah. works out well here. No, I'll, I'll charge at the uh, water elemental. Yeah, you do so. You uh, have another. Oh, actually, no, you're out of swings, aren't you? you 
to out of the, swings. But you ran up. Okay, understood. You Playground was busy swing. today. Uh, Christopher, you, uh, you suddenly find yourself uh, alone uh, in the northern area of this uh, place, and you can see Hellbrook with the water elemental just to the south. Uh, but beyond that, everything is darkness. What do you do? I'll send a guiding bolt its way. Alright. Will it... Oh, no. Hold up. Let me just see if this does it. It's got to be pretty terrifying to spend, like, days at a time only being able to see 20 feet all around you. Oh, that'd be horrible. And that's only when you have your thing lit. Like, what if you have to turn it off to be sneaky or something? Like... Yeah, that'd be that'd be horrible. Okay, so we can either say it was a twenty, or we can say it was a a nat twenty, or we can say it was a nat fourteen. I think either way, I'm pretty good. Uh, well, I mean, uh, it affects your damage, though, doesn't it? No. Do you crit on a nat fourteen? <laughs> that'd be that'd be pretty op too. Maybe not Atticus, uh, but you know. No, so probably like, I think it's twenty three. All right. Well. Um, I don't know why your macro's doing that, but you hit, and, uh, yeah, you conjure <laughs> a bolt of, a uh, holy light and arc it, uh, directly over your dwarven companion's head, and it strikes the, uh, watery creature in the back and blasts away a chunk of it. Oh my. Uh, and that'll be it. Alright, yeah, it looks, uh, slightly less wet now. I had that effect on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> what? My ex-wife used to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, brutal. Uh, Elias, you uh, find yourself face to face with your second <laughs> elemental of today, also having gotten your bell rung by it. Uh, your ears are both ringing, but uh, you know you've got tinnitus anyway from all the explosions. So what else is new? Wow. So, uh, what do you do? Wow. <laughs> Take a step back and sling some Eldritch Blasts. A step back, you say? Ooh. Ooh. AOP. He's going to pee all over your A. Oh, good. All right, so FNA, before, before you FNA, Cotton, FNA. Oh, he crits on Ooh. you first. <laughs> oh, no. As you uh, you step back, he's Come like, and gotcha, slam. bitch, and uh, just uppercuts you. <laughs> Uh, and he sends you flying backwards with a little assistance. You take 27 points of bludgeoning damage. No, no, um, no. Go, 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 Storf. No! Damn you, Hopra! <laughs> <laughs> go, go, Storf. Go, Storf. Activate. Go, 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 Storf. Yes. So this, the same dwarf reappears out of the mists, and he's got his tower shield and deflects part of this slam. You also right. notice that this dwarf has a, a battle axe embedded in his his helmet. <laughs> oh wow! Very nice. So only eighteen uh, damage. I wonder how he died. Um, yes, it appears as if eighteen Enter. damage, as uh, Hobrook's ancestor has kindly protected you from getting your teeth knocked out. Um, now they just cracked uh, a couple of them, so that's good for you. Uh, that said, you do manage to withdraw after that and lay out a uh, magical barrage onto the creature, striking it a total of three times, one of them very effectively. Uh, let's see, that's going to be a total of 27 damage. Mm -hmm. Oh man, just what he would have done if there wasn't dwarf interference. Alright. Oh, yeah, uh, lar large uh, bl you know, masses of water get blasted off and just settle into the ground as a puddle, uh, not rejoining the host. Uh, after your assault, but it is still uh, whirling around uh, wildly. Elias is just sopping wet and kind of just breathing so heavily. He's not looking so hot. Alright, anything else? That's that's all he's got in him this round. Alright. Oops, accidentally just... let see. Uh, creature is going to, or the water elemental is going to, uh, smell blood in the water, uh, as it were, and, uh, step forward a little bit, which will leave him vulnerable to an attack from Hobrook, but, uh, doesn't care. He's going for the tiefling. Uh, yeah, Hobrook's song bites into it deeply, but, uh, not enough to, uh, render it inert, and, uh, it lashes out at Elias with, uh, two 
wet and wild fists. Ooh, baby. I just Thanks. sound like Stewie Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> wet and wild fists. Ooh, it was almost a three. Uh, Elias, you get clocked twice more for a total of 25 points of damage. You mm. are unconscious, sir. Uh, yeah, what's what's the death rule? Oh, no, it doesn't matter unless I get, like, negative my max, right? Uh, yeah, that, that'll that that'll do it. But, um, for now... I send a, I send a fire no storm negative, on Elias' body. If you take 50% of your max HP in one hit, I think, I, you then know you what? can be subject to instant death. I, I thought if you did, uh, I can't remember exactly, but um, regardless, I'm fairly sure there's no negative HP in fifth edition. It it Fair says enough. that, but I'm pretty sure there is something about if you reach your negative max that you do actually die. But I, I might be mistaken, but I think that's the case. Yeah, that's um, right. I'm gonna let someone else confirm. Well, Elias, that, so you have some time to, to but, research uh, it. <laughs> that's true. That said. Um, the darkness closes in around you, Elias, and you feel your life starting to slip from you. Give me a death saving throw. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen a death saving throw. Alright, show me the yellow. Is Elias. Be with me. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Is that a thing? Do you regain a hit point on a critical success of a death saving yeah. throw? Yep, what? You totally do. Motherfucker! <laughs> You son of a bitch. Death saving throw. Just, oh, I healed from it. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit him again, Zach. Jesus. And only he had three watery fists. You know, like one magic missile cast would just kill Elias instantly right now? Well, I need to drop some of them. Did you say flame strike that area? Yeah, I heard that. Let's do that. <laughs> That sounds like it would be effective against a water elemental. Let's do it. <clears throat> Elias might be immune to fire damage. Or does he he's just have resistance? He's, he's just he's resistant. resistant. All right. Where, where's this fire damage coming from? Uh, it's Disgusting. not for now. But uh, we'll revisit Yandala. that on uh, on Chris's first turn. However, that's all the all the all the water elementals got for now. He tried his best. Damn it! He thought he had it, but shut down by some bullshit. So he's uh <laughs> he's going to yield and pass the baton to his friend Earth Elemental, who is going to spring up out of the ground directly behind Atticus and lunge at him. I okay. figured he would. Yeah, go figure. But, uh, hold on a sec. Aha! Fuck. Terrible roll. That fucking elf bitch is going to show up the second this combat ends. I know it. I can feel it. She's probably like in like some. She's been displaced, would be my guess. She just uh, stands up from the bushes, pulling up her trousers. Hey guys, have to take a break. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Actually, Had a massive uh, growl up behind the tweez. You know, I rolled that with advantage, but now that I think about it, I don't think I should have because he has enough time. You you know he's coming at that point. He doesn't. Yeah, that's why I didn't move. Quite lunge out. Uh, so that's gonna be one hit, one miss, actually. So we're just gonna pick the first roll. Uh, however, he does clock you once, and you can take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And it's your turn to respond. Let me finish with the math first. One second. Mm -hmm. Just, okay. Alright, well, since other dude is dead anyway, I'm going to use my bonus action to move this over to uh, Mr. Earth Elemental. And since he would like to be in my face, he's going to get the most magic of missiles. At the fourth level. So it's slotted. Yeah. There's like the most magical of missiles, like... Like a, a, a nice piece of candy, or... Alex, how do your spell slots work? Do you get two max level slots from Warlock and then all the other Sorcerer slots as well? No, I'm primarily Sorcerer, so I've got most of my spells come from um, that, and then my Warlock stuff, because they're free, essentially, um, they can be used, I think, at my third level? I'd have to double check. Like, it's, it's automatically placed into it, so I have a little bit more from that. Gotcha. 
What's your warlock level? Like three? Three. And I won't be going any higher on it. You can save Brian. Alright. And, uh, I'm sorry, are you targeting the... Which Earth elemental? elemental? The Earth Elemental? The one right. that decided it wanted to smack me. Yeah, he did. And, alright, and you moved your hex, I see. Yes. Alright. Moment. Okay, so... Total of 57 damage? Is that correct? Are we ignoring the, the the four from the first one? Yes. Okay, that's what I I'm thought. I'm doing that yeah. just to get the slot taken. I see. Okay. Uh, so 57 friggin' damage to this guy. And, uh, yeah, you just blast a number of rocks to, to bits, and, uh, you know, a large chunk of this thing's mass is just crumpled to the ground, uh, just obliterated. But it is still uh, wheeling around and swinging its uh, rocky arms at you wildly. So right, the way instant lay down. The way instant death works in fifth edition is if you go to zero and then have enough damage left over after that mm -hmm. that equals your hit point maximum, you'll die. It seems like at our level that's like nearly impossible. Yeah, I would have to be really fucked to do that to you guys. <laughs> what are you fighting? <laughs> Either that or just like you know. Maybe, like, you know, the floating castle falls on you. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably do it. Um, so, uh, Atticus, does that do it for you? Yeah, I'm not moving. All right. Uh, Hobrook, it's back to you, sir. The water elemental remains. Elias uh, is hanging on by a thread, it seems. And uh, Atticus is doing battle mano a mano with the reappeared earth elemental that you probably can't see now that I think about it. Yep, but don't worry about that part. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um... It's hard to imagine how an axe would be effective against a water elemental, but um, I don't really have a lot of options. So, uh... Hobrook Song is going to try and cleave through this uh, gush of water. Right. Twice. Oops, I meant to roll with advantage there. No, oh, but it was a hit anyway. Um, and then here's the second one. We had advantage. Alrighty, let's see. So the first one definitely hits. Uh, let's see. 21 damage. Yep. I'm rolling hot tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you bring Holbrook Song around, and uh, just as you're wondering how this act is going to hurt this thing, uh, you cut directly through it, and you're like, yeah, I don't think that did anything. And then uh, it shudders for a moment and just collapses to the ground, having lost all of its structure. And there's just a large puddle uh, before you and Elias now. This must be made of I'll, oil. I'll give a curious glance to my axe and just kind of nod. And uh, I guess I'll turn to uh, face the, the last foe on the battlefield and charge towards him. Thanks, All right. friend. Yeah, I'll assume you can hear the sounds of... Uh, of pew, 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 Coming off from the, from the distant east. Uh, how do I... Turn off ruler. No, turn off. How do I... Click, click the button. There we go. It's actually voice activated. You have to say it louder than that. <laughs> Holbrook uh, to E seven. Honestly, I can't even see Atticus or the Earth Elemental, so I guess I'm just running in the direction of the noise. Oh, well, sounds like a plan. <clears throat> All right, Christopher, uh, what do you do, sir? You can see uh, Holbrook running to the east, but little else. Oh, now you can see a little more. We are going to cast Mass Cure Wounds. Uh. So at six, and uh, I can see Hobrook, Elias, and myself. So okay, we all get twenty-four healing. Very nice. All right, you guys can go ahead and uh, apply that as uh, the healing powers of Yolanda washes over you. Ah, <laughs> uh, the healing juju that I did not get any of. More <laughs> Ooh, jelly. Womp womp. All right. Anything else, Christopher? Uh, I will use a free action to 
Uh, do nothing. <laughs> an excellent choice. I like it. All right. Can I make an insight check to see if I know that I'm being a play uh, a played character? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can, you, you can give it a roll. Um, it helps if you're suffering from Shadowfell madness, but uh, twenty-two. You... <laughs> do I have meta awareness? Um. You know, you have an inkling that something is uh, not quite right. You can feel the strings. No, that's just my anxiety disorder, you. actually. And you, you, you can't quite get a glimpse of the, the puppeteer to which you play marionette, but uh, you can feel the strings tugging at you. So there you go. If only you got a 25. You, you would have seen your own face. It would have been great. Um, anywho, <laughs> that's uh, here comes some rolls. None of them. <laughs> nope. Nice try. Uh, you came up against the metal wall. Oh, man. Now we have to travel through the shadow fall listen to this guy tell us how he thinks we're all in the simulation. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you, you see? Spoilers it's just you perfectly God. planned out. You know what I mean? <laughs> we just happened to find that statue? Bullshit. If the gods are up there out. rolling the fucking dice. <laughs> yep. All right. Elias. Toying with our lives. It is your turn. Uh, you, you thought the uh, the end was upon you for a brief moment, but then you realized that you're awesome and just came back to life. <laughs> what do you do? Um, he blinks in bewilderment, and um, he's going to step forward. Yar. Yeah, you you see uh, the, the dead water elemental before you and Hobrook nowhere close, so you, you assume that you did that. Just blacked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... Let's actually step a little bit further, and then my spells can work. Oop. He's going to sling some Eldritch Blast at that Earth Elemental over yonder. Hopping up my buddy. Warlock buddy. <laughs> kind of. Hopping up buddy. Not super good at it, though. <laughs> All right. Uh... How, yeah, even so, you strike the beast twice with your uh, magical assault, dealing a total of 19 damage. And uh, you knock loose one large rock and crack a few more, but uh, the creature is still moving. All right, well. Uh, All right. That's, that's it. I'll do it for you. Ah, you... you you keep ending your turn, and I'm used to skipping it, doing it for everybody else. So oh. every time we, we do it at the exact same time, and I go <laughs> forward to. <laughs> How do you end your turn? At the bottom of the combat tracker, when it's your round or when it's your turn, you have the option at the, at the bottom to click end turn. Mm. I've, I've been I always keep mine in the roll log or whatever it's called. I'm trying yeah, to be a good player. It's very conscientious of you, but it's throwing me off because I'm doing it for everybody else. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, the Earth Elemental is uh, still up, and if it could be screaming in rage, it would be, but it feels very little because it's made out of rocks. However, it's still going to try and introduce those rocks to Atticus's space. That one's not going to do it. And, ah, the double deuce again! Oh, no. It's terrible. Wah-ha-ha. Damn. Ugh. Attic All right. Just like doing the side. You're rolling like around. shit, but I gotta say I love it. I'm uh, <laughs> I, I could enjoy it more. Uh, Atticus, <laughs> it's it's your turn. Uh, well, you know what? I'm gonna go pew pew on it. Pew pew pew. I'm shocked. Shocked, I say. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm shocked. <laughs> Shay. Pew pew pew. <laughs> that, that'd Sometimes be I feel like that. Are you yeah. in melee with the Earth Elemental? Uh, technically, yeah. I feel like it's uh, like a disadvantage. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's Is true. That? It does. Yeah. Matt, you're not supposed to rules lawyer for yeah. Zach. That, that's, uh, I told Zach I would on this one. Uh, <laughs> apparently, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. Um, yeah, that's gonna be disadvantage on those. Um, what, what you should do is... I'm going to hit the on, negative sign. Yep. On each and every one. Alright, Matt. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Uh, yeah, your your mouth blast just got downgraded uh, a little bit. 
And uh, let's see, 16, 12, 15. Uh, none of them find purchase on this thing's rocky being, and uh, all of them deflect off of it in uh, a different direction as uh, this thing is rearing up to strike you once more. What is that gif? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> I can't stop watching. That's, um... That's what, uh... What do you call him? Uh, I can't remember his name. The Living Planet, who was the villain in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That was, like, his first render before they got, like, a big budget boost, you know? Just, uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ego! That's his name. I remember now. Who anyway. played him? Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Kurt right. Russell. Well, Kurt Ben Russellia. Yep. So, all right. That uh, does that do it for you, Atticus? Forget if I asked already, or if you responded. Um. That is going to do it for me, though. I will go ahead and let you know if he goes to hit me, I will be throwing up shield. Okay. Was that plus 5 AC? Yeah. Are you sick it. or something? Uh, Did you oh, eat shield? It is no, your he swallowed turn. a shield. <laughs> you uh, had a beam of energy just sail past you a few feet to your left as you uh, charge into the darkness, so you know you're heading the right direction. Alright. Yeah, I feel like there's enough magic missiles in Eldritch Blast that should illuminate the battlefield. Yeah, it's uh, you have a pretty good idea of where Atticus is. <laughs> All right, you're heading essentially the right direction. All right, so that's one round's worth of movement. I love um, I guess I'll use my boots of charge here. Okay. No, no, I'll, no, I'll, I'll just use charge as an action. So I'll, I'll charge all the way in, but won't have any attacks left. Understood. Alrighty. Christopher. And I'll be right back. Alright. It's your turn, Thanks. Christopher. Uh, Holbrook has vanished into the darkness to the east. You stand alone in a circle of light with Elias. Right. You do? I will move. Uh, I'll just run. I'll run this way. Run, run, run. run and then run. I can see him. And run. then... Run. Uh, I'll use a bonus action. For real this time, <laughs> not just to, not just to try to get meta knowledge of my own existence. Uh, and I'll cast Healing Word. Brian, are you happy I uh, I added the uh, the image chat mod? So happy. <laughs> That's the best okay. mod. The dice are pretty cool though too. Yeah, they're they're all. Uh, I'm enjoying all of them right now. I haven't tinkered with them. some. There's one that I think would be kind of cool. Um, possibly outside the Shadowfell, but there's like a time tracker that would actually uh, mm -hmm. track the calendar and time of day and actually uh, transition light uh, accordingly and uh, move it appropriately like in combat as well as outside of combat. It has a certain scale and I can progress it. Nice. But uh, yeah, just kind of a cool thing. Anyway, That's Crumble knows. actually 14. That? Oh, the That's mass healing word again. Yeah. You're hitting uh, yourself, Holbrook, and Atticus this time? Yeah. And you said that's supposed to be a 14? Yeah, it didn't add my cleric bonuses. Ah, gotcha. Okay. I said a 14. I'll uh, let you guys take care of that. Halbrook, welcome back. You were just healed for 14 points. Sweet. Thanks, Elias. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Anything else, uh, Christopher? Maybe Elias. No, actually, can I change that to mass hurting word? <laughs> um, I'm Yolanda doesn't let you use not. that one. Afraid not. Yolanda will let me do whatever I want. I bring home the bacon. <laughs> what other cleric of Yol uh, Yondala is going to show up? <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> you know how yeah. deep I had to dig for a cleric deity that had a healing... <laughs> Come on, healing's got to be like the most popular domain. There's got to be more than one. It depends what pantheon you're looking at, I guess. So I'm yeah, Yondala is the only one. For which one is he, 
what's oh associated with halflings? I see. What uh, what like pantheon is she from? Is she like Greyhawk or Forgotten Realms or? I think she's Forgotten Realms. If I'm yeah. remembering correctly. Yeah. Aren't all but, the Greyhawk deities like imported into Forgotten Realms at this point anyway? Yeah, everything is at this point, but. Morden uh, is shared and. Yeah, actually, but the other it's ones from Dragonlance. Is it? Okay. No, we don't have uh, halflings I, I there. Been. It's been so long since I read Dragonlance. So. They don't have halflings in in Kryn. They have uh, Tender. Tender. Goose. Tender. Yeah. Yeah. Like Tasselhoff. Um. Yeah, she's anyway. Tasselhoff Burfoot. Yep. David Tasselhoff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So there was the healing, blessings of Yondala upon you. Elias, it is your turn. Right. Elias is going to move forward a bit. Apparently, my Amazon Echo thought I was talking to it when I said Elias. <laughs> is that so? Apparently. I didn't catch what it said because my headphones, but it was chirping up. You guys probably heard better than I did. You should just use computer sound for your sound. No reason. Oh, it's actually playing something. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa, play Pump Up the Jam. It didn't stop. Why didn't it stop? That's actually kind of cool, like, atmospheric music, though. Can you guys hear that? No. no. Oh, man. It's actually pretty good. I hear that. I think Alexa, that's like a, a, a Warlock class feature where Elias is haunting technological devices around you. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that was... I mean, I have no idea what it said it played when it, when it thought I was talking to it, but that was actually pretty appropriate. Yeah, we're playing like Shadowrun like kinda... now. No, it was kind of like haunting and ethereal, and like, uh, yeah, it, no, it was pretty good. Nice. Anyway, right. uh, Elias, it's your turn. He's gonna sling his own pew pews at the rock. All right. Yeah. Yeah, those will hit. <sighs> Three hits. Excuse me. So we got a uh, eighteen twenty-four damage. All right. Show this rock how to roll. Yeah, your uh, your blasts do not deflect off of it, and uh, instead uh, break through it in a few points, and again just eat away at this thing's mass. But uh, it still seems to be holding itself just barely together after your assault. All right, Atticus, sneeze on it. All right. However, it is its turn. Let's see if I can get two massive criticals before it goes down. Double two. Well, not a critical, but uh, that looks like a hit to me. Atticus did say he was going to catch shield, though. Uh, yes. You still planning on doing that? I believe yes. uh, his exact words were that he was going to throw it up. All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you retch for a moment, and uh, a magical <laughs> field of energy springs forth from your mouth and uh, intercepts the incoming fist of rock that was about to crash into you. And uh, it has just enough force to uh, restrain this beast, and uh, the, the boulder-sized fist uh, stops inches from your face, and it pulls it back. Christopher yells, see? You wouldn't do that from your mouth. I bet it was some joke from the simulation. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's listening to us. <laughs> All right, Atticus. Let's see if you can finish it off. Let's see here. Well, if you so desire. I do so desire, but you know what? I'm going to... I'm gonna slash at it. Where's my? How do I get to the thingy that says attack? Inventory. Reaper scythe. It's that. All right. Yeah, you uh, <laughs> reach your scythe back and uh, bring it down towards this thing, uh, and you destroy it. How how, how would you like to do so? Uh, since I'm using the, the scythe, uh, I'm going to literally cut it in half from the top down, go full anime frickin' style on it. Alright, yeah, yeah, you do so. And, uh, you speak something in, uh, an unknown language to everybody for a moment, begin to glow with energy, and your hair turns a different color. 
and uh, your weapon swings down, and uh, light trails behind it as it does so, and cuts the creature in half. Uh, the flashes of light that uh, ensue uh, hopefully do not trigger any epileptic seizures, but uh, they trigger and then it explodes and crumples to pieces. Good job. Yay. All right. Quite the message <laughs> from Grudge Gary Buzz. Uh, I call out for Tethra. See if she is back. <laughs> Tethra, are you done taking a shit? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, after the, uh, the combat ends, uh, a moment, or a few, you know, maybe about a minute passes, and the fog is, uh, starting to dissipate pretty clearly at this point. And, uh, after another moment, it's completely lifted, and you guys can see, uh, fairly clearly as far as, uh, you know, the darkness of the Shadowfell is concerned. Um, and, uh, off in the distance, uh, the keen-eyed among you, Elias and Atticus, uh, you do spot uh, the shape of Tethra uh, still roaming about the wood atop her displacer beast, uh, really at the edge of your vision. I'll, uh, I'll call over to her and then I'm going to check some bodies. Yeah, she seems to uh, notice you guys calling out and, uh, you know, after a moment begins heading your direction and uh, soon enough has reached with you. And she looks about and uh, sees the scene and, you know, half you guys uh, soaked and, you know, bloodied and uh, says, what happened? So I lost you in the mist, it seems. Well, a messenger I... arrived from the material plane. A from messenger? A genie. For you, here. Well, Must I mean, be quite the messenger. How did they arrive? The djinn do what they be do and... A djinn? Well... <laughs> Sometimes a, we just get stuck in it. A Dow and a Mirrod, to be exact. You have some interesting acquaintances, it seems. This is their kind are rare here, even. Rare still to see them working together. I I've, did hear that certain breeds of these creatures do not care for each other's company much. What did, type. what did they have to say? It must have been quite important for them to come here to speak to you. They attempted to bribe us to return to the material plane. Hmm. Well, that is interesting. I wonder why they would do that. Because we're obviously on the right path. They want to stop us from doing this. Do you believe Roz sent them? Is he trying to stop you? I believe Gros Gary Bosch has his own motives, and um, considering he's linked with Raz in some way, I don't trust them. She frowns and says, I do not know this name. Even Roll a you... knowledge local check, you might figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does no matter. I take it you uh, will not be returning. She looks around, uh, given the state of things. I believe our message was clear to him. Well, all right. Well, unless you need a moment, yes. I'd recommend we be off. Well, very well. You we do need, appear to be. We need wounded. several moments. Do what you must, but you should not dawdle longer than is needed. I'll blast off some. Are we going to take a short rest? Holbrook is interested in the um, the mall that fell on the ground. It's the Mall of America. It's pretty big. I mean, yeah, we should totally loot. Yeah. Uh, it is a very large, uh, heavy iron mall. Uh, you can lift it, but it's a little big to be particularly wieldy for you. It's a little awkward. The uh, handle itself is uh, taller than you are uh, by about a foot and a half. Um, but uh, it certainly has some weight to it, and uh, the craftsmanship seems uh, bizarre, almost alien to you. Uh, but it is, it is very fascinating, and certainly a uh, formidable weapon. I'll, I'll pick it up. Does it uh, does its uh, size change at all in my grasp? Uh, it does not. Okay. 
And there was a cup. There was another item that fell on the ground, right? And then I guess we'll look around the uh, pool of water to see if anything fell in there as well. Yeah, yeah. you see uh, basically the clothing uh, and the things that these creatures were wearing. Uh, their flesh, as it was, uh, crumpled to you know the element that they came from when they died. But the the rest of their belongings remained. Um, for the Dao, it was uh, basically a set of fine clothing, although somewhat torn at this point. Um, the uh, the mall and uh, uh, some jewelry. Um, he had some like golden earrings and some rings. Uh, the most notable, by far, of which, however, was a uh, heavy golden chain that was uh, adorned with uh, fist-sized emeralds and opals. Um, that it was basically had wrapped around it, kind of like a bandolier. I like emeralds. Well, that's there. Um, in the pool, you can see uh, really uh, just about on the edge of it, so it's within reaching and you know sight from the shore. Um, a pile of fine clothes uh, that the Merid was wearing, and uh, just, um, largely undamaged, but uh, also a, a turban with a, a strange uh, kind of sparkling gemstone set atop it, ornamentally. Okay, um, I'll uh, collect them all in a pile. I don't know if Elias wants to throw them in group loot or if somebody wants to try identifying them. Yeah, we can detecting magic. We can identify them while we rest. Um, I will blow through two channels. Uh, is anybody under half? Elias is. Other than Elias. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Okay, uh, I can get you, I can get you back <laughs> up to half. I can't get you back any more than that. That's funny. One sec. Holbrook doesn't seem himself in uh, mind, but in mind or spirit, but in body he actually looks quite healthy. So he's doing pretty well in that regard. All right, so uh, <clears throat> um, I know you're casting Identify. Did you guys establish that you're taking a short? Oh, taking a short rest. Okay, that's what you guys are doing. So you guys uh, settle down and get comfortable on the shore of this uh, forest pond here. Uh, now having cleared it of uh, otherworldly foes, and uh, instead of out, you know tending your wounds and uh, identifying these items you just found. Um, Elias, you spend some time examining all of them, and you find that only one item among them is magical. And uh, that is, in fact, the uh, gemstone that sits atop the uh, the turban that the Merit wore. And that is a gem of brightness. Let's see. All players. Server. I think that works. So you guys... Uh, should be able to see it in the items now. So th there's actually an items directory. I'm not. I'm not sure if that popped up for you guys when I shared it out. Um, no. Okay. Well, you should be able to examine it if you go to the items directory. It's one of the tabs at the top. Gem of brightness. The gem of brightness. It, it should be the only thing in there for you guys right now. Um, back in roll twenty, I saved items as journal entries because there wasn't really a better way to do it. So uh, there's still a number of them. You know. Uh, in there for all the items that you guys have gotten up to this point uh, but going forward I'm probably going to be having the items appear in the items tab so just be aware that this is where those things will be appearing from now on so yeah the gem of brightness does have some uh, magical properties uh, go figure based around light uh, basically it can be a powerful light source or you can shoot like light blasts with it to uh, blind creatures but they consume charges of which it has 50 um, the uh, the hammer and uh, the gemstones and gold belt thing are uh, unremarkable in the sense that they're not enchanted, but very remarkable in the sense that the uh, gold chain, um, you guys uh, spend some time discussing it, and between uh, Elias's uh, identifying magics and uh, Hobrook's keen eye for uh, metalwork and gemstones, uh, you guess that thing is probably worth uh, if you can find a buyer for it. Uh, at least 10,000 gold uh, gold coins. Uh, beyond that, it looks very fancy and uh, could be worn in a similar fashion should one of you guys want to make a uh, very ostentatious fashion statement. 
It's nice to know that uh, if we save the world from destruction, we'll at least be rich at the end of it all. I'll take the gym but, uh, if nobody else wants it. Being as I can't see shit here. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Probably best for you anyway. I'll note here that gem goes to Christopher. Wonderful. But uh, after we're done um, messing around with the loot and we're still resting, Hobrook is interested in uh, getting your guys' opinions on what to make of that message. Uh, I, a nice origami suppose, swan. I don't suppose we should take the elementals at their word, based on the fact that they were willing to kill us when we refused. I am a bit concerned for the efforts back on the material plane. I just boosted your light radius, uh, Christopher. Awesome. I can see so much shit now. I simply take it as a sign that, again, we're on the right path. We're finding out information that he does not want us to know, so he's going to come up with any excuse to get us to return. I, Before I, for now, my part, think that they were probably telling the truth. We know Ross was headed that way, more or less, and it was just a convenient excuse to get us out of this path. Atticus, you speak as if we are to assume that Grege is an enemy. Not necessarily that he's an enemy, but that he's connected to our enemy. And in such a way that could be beneficial for us to know. I mean, he's a powerful djinn, and if he's provided Raz the means to be immortal, if we can find a way from him to, you know, undo that, then we can end him permanently. What was it the Asili Wait, told like, us kill about him? the relationship? That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> what, what did the Asili tell us about the relationship between Grej and Raz? I think it was the relationship between. God, I don't even know if we should take Ra anything the Asili said seriously, though. I think it was between Raz and the Shadowfell. I thought. Oh, it I was thought he mentioned Ra their relationship too. He did mention a connection between Grej Garibaz and uh, the Ace Seely. I'm sorry, um, Grej Garibaz and Ros Mordalis. But uh, Grej I, gave him his power or something, right? But I don't think they're on well, good terms. Well, that they were linked. Anymore. It was never explicitly stated, you know, that he gave him his power, but that they were linked. It could just be Wiener cousins. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't specific, but just that uh, there was a connection there. That uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, he he was he was pretty vague, uh, so. You don't know exactly, but he was definitely hinting at a connection between the two. That's why Atticus is like, no, there's, there's a connection there somehow, and considering what we know about the djinn so far, basically he I, he grants wishes, he grants power, in one form or another. So the logical conclusion for him is, he gave him the ability to have this immortality of some sense. So that also means he has to have a way of dealing with it, or dealing with him. And so, we've got to find out how they're linked. Maybe that's something we can use. Because they couldn't kill why him last these, time. Why must these immortal beings always draw us mortals into their conflicts? Probably because they're bored. Who else are going to draw? The other immortals are... Busy drawing other people. If the opportunity presented itself, right. would you be opposed to killing Grish? Ridding ourselves of his meddling in our affairs? I don't know, man. That's like a CR-50. Or... At this point, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not point. sure. Has Hobrick ever met Grish in person? I don't recall. Um, I've only, I think I've only heard about him secondhand, unless no, he showed up guys, to resurrect what's his face that one time. Because you guys got the Grudge Gary box in the Underdark uh, after you had left <laughs> uh, Kazra Kalkum, and you were with the party at that point. So I think you met him once. Uh, but he was far from our enemy in that meeting. 
Yeah, no, he he, he huh. was a, a boon. He was a help. He uh, gifted you that box, which did extract the price for its services, but proved to be invaluable during your travels. That was I was a bit healer. conflicted, Elias, to be either. honest. I have a, I gotta, I'll be back in one minute, huh. so carry on discussing, but I'll be back in. Yeah. Atticus has also not met him. He's only going off the stories you've told him. It would be easier to capture him than to kill him. I'm not even what are we sure about? he's our enemy. What? True enough, but if he's the power source and the whole reason that Raz is even still alive, things will have to probably be done. Perhaps, but that's jumping to quite a few conclusions. I agree, it is, but my point with all of this is that we do not know um, their connection yet. And the fact that we're here where we could potentially learn it, because we know that Raz is connected to this plane, and that there's a connection between the Jin and Raz, we need... Brain doesn't want to work anymore, sorry. Um, More like ass. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm like, I'm too tired to think straight. Um, strikes me okay. as odd as they wanted that staff so badly, we don't even have it right now. Arguably a, a weaker... We do have it. There's two staffs. The staff of Faust and the staff of... Um, What's-his-face? His, the master of Faust. Um, and Grege wanted the staff of Faust, which we do have. We, I'm pretty sure. No, I thought uh, Gatekeeper... Uh, the Apprentice. The staff, yeah, the, the, the Apprentice one that... Uh, he took it from us. Uh, other one. Had. Oh, oh. Yeah. And, um. Who wanted the staff? I, I thought you were talking about Grej. That was a long time yeah. ago he wanted it. We have oh, the right. staff of Faustus. We got that back. Yeah, we've just gotten that back. When did we get that stuff, staff of no, Faustus back? No, we gave it to the gatekeeper yeah. two episodes ago. Yeah, ago. well, uh, for temporarily. Yeah, so. We yeah, got it we... back when we left. Yes. We, I did not let him here and go through everything, and we we got it back, uh -huh. and then you know we had and to we... go over there and find out. And he he did it. want to keep it for longer. Yeah, I thought he was going to keep it until we got rid of the uh, Nightwalkers. Zach, do we have the staff of nope. Faust right now or not? Did you guys leave that with Evelios to study? I some of us were under the impression that we did, and some of us thought that we had gotten it back from him. I think you left it with him. I thought we didn't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. I think you held on to it. Okay. It's not like we're talking to him. <laughs> um, yeah, mostly he was just a dick when you did anyway, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, he basically blackmailed us. Like, he, was, he insisted that we give it to him because uh, he's pissed off at us and he threatened us with death like three times and then uh, he said we had to go take care of the uh, Nightwalkers if we want the staff back I, I believe it was four times over but oh. uh, you know <laughs> who's counting <laughs> well just wait till you get back and you know better not slip up otherwise <laughs> well Holbrook I know Grej may seem friendly because of that box he gave us one time but he's since taken it back. He's taken more stuff from me. He's taken two minutes of my life. And so far, he's had me spend it fetching ingredients and opening jars for him. Um, and now he's sending his slaves, servants, to attack us. Right now, I don't even Complicated give a fuck friends. about the Jin. I want to know if the defenses on the material plane have fallen. And if our friends are in mortal danger. Without going friends there, are in mortal them. danger. They're always going to be in mortal danger. More like immortal danger. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Perhaps we, we have no way of knowing, but it is on my mind. Fair enough. Was Finnis in Hammond's Holdfast? He was not. Um, Brogan was, and they had been together fairly recently. 
but uh, Finnis was investigating a lead in the Wormwood and uh, basically said he'd be in touch and uh, find him there if you were looking for him. Gotcha. So all by is lonesome. Either way, I wish to finish our business in this miserable place as fast as we can. Let's be on our way sooner rather than later, Elias. Elias will walk back to his displacer beast and mount it. Alright. Yeah, you guys uh, take your rest, patch your wounds, discuss uh, the goings-on, and then uh, get back on your mounts and uh, hit the trail again. Um, you continue east, uh, quickly finding the uh, trail of dead uh, ground uh, not far to the south, uh, you know, when you lost it in the fog. But uh, quickly get back on the, on course and uh, continue on your way. And uh, it seems as if several hours pass. And you remember uh, this journey it took about a day uh, mounted. Uh, it was much faster uh, on the top of these beasts than it was on foot, uh, just on foot. So uh, you figure you cover probably about half that time, and uh, you're probably at the midway point when uh, you hear a, a familiar voice uh, call out from the wood uh, around you. You can't quite pinpoint it, just that it seems to be coming from the trees. And uh, it speaks uh, you know, in a very clear tone. It says, ah, oh, my friends, oh, I'm so glad to see you again unharmed here. I had feared that the Shadowfell would well, do what it does to outsiders the two uh, elves are with us this time right uh they are and they look at around and they are freaking the fuck out right now um Zyle is uh literally has uh fallen off the displacer beast that he is still riding uh double mounted with uh tethra and she uh is looking down between him and then uh, around at the trees like eyes wide and uh she, she uh you know, she thinks she knows what she hears right now and kind of looks to you guys with a horrified look on her face and, and just kind of shakes her head and says, No. Tethera, I'd like for you to meet the Asil. <laughs> <laughs> Tolbrick's going to dismount again. Tethra, is it? Well, it's so very nice to meet you. I so rarely have an opportunity to speak with your kind. They seem to avoid me whenever they sense my presence, which, well, it's so strange that you didn't. Oh dear, but... that was your name. <laughs> <laughs> says, uh, but regardless, and the sound seems to be coming from uh, a different area entirely that, that it did a moment ago now, it says, uh, I am happy you're here, and I can speak with all of you. It says, but tell me, uh, you seem as if you've been very busy since last we, we spoke. You, you have the look of those burdened by knowledge they'd rather not have. What have you been up to? I'm good with the knowledge I have. Assumptions. Piece of shit. <laughs> um, surely you know what we've been up yeah, to. Yeah, bitch, you know what we've been doing. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, it's true I have some guesses. Uh, I don't know for sure. I sometimes see flashes of the future, but I never know what will come to pass and what will simply pass by. Tell me, did you... We don't have time for games. We have business with the gatekeeper. Well, far be it for me to keep you. And, uh, you know, I know you said you dismounted, but uh, it just seems to be kind of moving all around you and, uh, you know, not, not really staying pinned down. But uh, it's like, I'm, I'm happy to tag along should you wish the company. I just wish to, to speak with you. It does get so lonely out here, and... Well, as you can see, he, uh, you know, you, you don't, you can almost feel him nodding towards the Shadarkai, um, who have drawn weapons at this point and are, uh, standing back to back looking about. It says, uh, the locals aren't much for company or conversation. It says, yes, I do have guess, guesses about what you've been up to. Tell me, did you meet with the creature Talagast? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I thought you might. How did that go? He is no longer. <sighs> a tragedy, that. What's your well, face? 
Perhaps a kindness to put him out of his misery, but a sad tale all the same. He did tell you his tale, didn't he? Yes, he did. So you now, uh, you know what those you serve have been doing. It seems as if you do serve them if you struck down the creature all the same. I think we just as soon means to an end. Strike down Avelios. For all I can. Well, far be it for me to judge, but interesting. I did think you mortals from the material plane had qualms about such things. It seems as if I've been misinformed. I haven't visited in a very long time, you see. There are rules that keep me out. But, uh, that is neither here Like Rule 34. Talagast was a monster. There was no saving him. A monster, yes, but only because of the circumstances that Avelios put him in, from my understanding. Simply out of a desire to save his daughter? You can hardly blame a man taking action for such a cause. Wasn't our uh, place to judge. Hmm. I mean, we well, did, the elves but... are, so I don't know who will stand in judgment for poor uh, Fenrial and Shayela. Veletha is as well, I believe. But very well, you, you do as you must. I understand, it's for the greater good. You serve a higher purpose. <laughs> Speaking of that higher purpose, I... You have the stink of genie about you. Well, how would that be, I wonder? We wonder, too. Whisper mothers about <laughs> simulations. They keep showing up in our lives. That's my new body spray. <laughs> <laughs> That's my genie axe. stank. My axe, yeah. Were you perhaps accosted by agents of Grezgari Baz? We are literally Claims standing by their corpses, so I think you no, know. No, we've been riding for half a day. It's been half a day. Um, you hear a. a kind of dark chuckle from the trees. <laughs> well, that is indeed interesting. That's That toes the line of breaking our agreement, I'd say. He's telling Boulder. Ah, so Grace Gary, gosh, is the one keeping you here then? Well, not quite. We have an agreement not to trespass on each other's territory for the time. What is Grace's hey, uh, territory? Well... Some time he has everything but the shadow plane. Laid claim to your material plane, where I have made my home here, just watching from the shadows. The voice moves Seems around like again. a shit deal for you. Oh, it may seem that way, but you learn much just watching unseen. Why would a jinn of his stature be so invested in the affairs of mortals on the material plane? That is an interesting question. He seems to have been meddling for some time, from what I gather. But... You... have been wounded by these creatures. He... He no longer is treating you kindly, I, I dare say. Would you count him among your enemies now? I don't know. That's a complicated question. Well, I've never met the guy, so yes. Suffice to say, well, you, if you had an iron bottle, I would love to have one. He, uh, you hear a delighted chuckles, like, oh, oh, you are versed in such things, are you? Uh, that's true, there are a few devices that can capture such a creature, but... I don't know how it happen. works. Any dwarf could craft you an iron bottle, Elias. The, the legends say do you, it, can, Holbrook. you can capture any being in, an, in a magic iron bottle. Legends also say genies must grant you a wish if you capture them. I've heard genies have 55-inch slongs. <laughs> that is an excellent point, Christopher. <laughs> the trick is you gotta get him to fuck the bottle. Because <laughs> I'm not right up here. There's a long pause and as well. Uh, most of what you have to say is fairly <laughs> accurate. Not all of you. Yeah, the iron bottle thing is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> says, it just so happens that Grezh Garibaz is one singularly determined being. And if it has made it to his cause to stop you, 
Well, he will not cease until you are stopped. I also happen to know that you are right. One of the few things that can stop him is an iron flask properly engraved. And I also know. And uh, Elias, uh, you blink. And uh, when your eyes reopen, the Acelia is standing directly in front of you. And uh, he is holding an iron flask, and he has his hand on the cork. And uh, it's pretty much pointed towards you. I also know that I am one of the few beings that you will ever encounter that may be in possession of such a device. Could be yours. Just need you to make me a very simple promise. need you to promise to use this at the first opportunity on Gresh Gary Potts and to keep him contained within for at least a year hmm. and a day. Hang on a sec, Kristen. Elias, our battle is with Rasmodalis. Be careful what you sign yourself up for. By a year and a day. Yes, your battle is with Rasmodalis, but should you be stopped by agents of the Jinn, well... We will surely fail. Can you? We won't that? be stopped. It seems as if some of you were, and his something. eyes, uh, eyes linger on Elias and says, "He came close to crossing over. I could feel it." Hmm. Oh yeah, but then he created his death save. made another terrible promise. Oh, and what promise is that? That I would deliver Grishgari Baz to a Rakshasa that are alive. What? <laughs> Motherfucker, oh, how many mystical creatures do you, <laughs> do you make deals with? Well, perhaps I'll Every you... one of them. <laughs> Give me another DR. I swear to God, I'll do it. I'll give you a moment to discuss this. It seems as if it may have upset some of your companions, Elias. Oh, I don't give a shit. Were you planning to tell us about this? Truth be told, few things in this universe scare me. That Rakshasa is one of them. I wasn't sure what would happen if I told you. I do remember he implied that I shouldn't. Why well, tell us to make now. more sense now why you've uh, got this uh, problem with the Jin? I was wondering why his name was coming up so often of late. This this was after he's accosted me already. Is it not possible for you to keep both a promise to me and your pact with this creature? Perhaps you could capture him within the bottle deliver to him to the Rakshasa a year and a day later or perhaps just give him the bottle I could why don't we that just kill you and take the bottle and then we can use it as we please and Holbrook is going to draw his axe he shrugs and says well you can try are you sure that's the way you want to go Holbrook Helmholtz Holbrook, I, you don't leave me many options. I signed a deal. Do you know what will happen to me? To my everlasting soul? You signed too many deals, Elias. And you're about to sign another one. I need a way out. This bottle is one of the only weapons I could possibly bring to bear against Grij. But will it sacrifice our greater mission? Grish can pop me out of existence into his realm at any moment. He owns me. The mission is compromised because of that. Why a year and Hubrick, a day? Hubrick is frustrated and he's going to bury his axe in the nearest tree. And he's going to step away from the conversation. Why do you need hit Gris Gary Bosch gone for a year and a day specifically? What I, rule gets circumvented if you are in the material plane for a year and a day? 
I really hate to do this, but I gotta take care of a baby for a little bit. No. Worst, worst possible time. <laughs> I know. All right, do Sorry. what you gotta do, but yeah, yeah we might uh, be temporarily on pause. <laughs> we can still discuss, but uh, you know. Yeah. I'll have chat. Let, let us know when you're back, Brian, because we might take a break or something. That right. seems yeah. like a critical moment. For sure. Uh, the uh, creature is still, um, and Brian, I know you're going, go ahead, but it's still uh, more or less speaking to Elias. It seems to know that uh, Elias is really the one uh, desirous of this object and uh, continues to just maintain his posture with a kind of extended, um, but also readied. And uh, while they're they're conversing, uh, Holbrook, you, you, you stepped aside uh, and you know, sunk Holbrook's song into the, uh, you know, meaty bark of a nearby tree and are kind of huffing about. And uh, suddenly, out of the shadow uh, behind the tree, where certainly she wasn't before, uh, Tethra appears. And um, she uh, whispers to you just as you're around the tree and says, uh, make your move and we are with you. All right, I nod, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my axe out of the tree. All right, she nods to you too, and then uh, basically disapparates, uh, spins around, and suddenly no longer is in the shadows where she just uh, just stood a moment ago. All right, um, I'm gonna assume I'm not gonna be able to get a sneak attack on this thing, so I guess I'm I'm just gonna charge in. Okay. All right. Uh, roll initiative. I'm going to. Well, hold on. Let me. Do I need to clear an encounter? No. I can do that now. Uh, I'm going to set up the map. Just we're going to use the southern part of the map we're already on. Just to keep that easy. There's no pond. We can just pretend that that's a a large tree. I'm back. With the power of our imagination. Oh, Elias, you're back. That was quick. You good? Are you back for real? Yep. Yep, for real. Oh man. Uh, so things escalated. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a minute to set up because there's things that need to be set up. Uh, can't find the shit that I need. Electra, bedroom lamp do. off. Uh, there is Zile. We'll say you were over here by this tree. Like Tethra has uh, kind of vanished for now. And uh, Zile is uh, still standing, kind of just around, but uh, back. And then let me get the AC Lee. Zyle is the one that lived? Zyle is the one that lived. He still moves uh, with a little bit of a limp right now. But uh, he has... A, uh, it seems as if the, the shock and fear of the initial uh, you know, surprise has faded. And a look of uh, cold determination rests on his face now as he uh, casually handles his uh, bladed chain. Um, let me find my dude... Where is he? I know I made a creature for this creature. I cannot find it at the moment. Apologize. Hopefully it's hell? not back in roll 20. No, it was definitely imported, but let me... Shit, let me see. Uh, where are the balls is it? I might just have to use Sir Floofer as a placeholder token. <laughs> Sir Floofer lives again. template I wanted to use is not here. The 
hell. Alright, I am actually legit going to use a placeholder token. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to get my book, because I actually just copied a stat block for something else for this creature, and just basically reskinned it, so this is actually not a huge problem. One sec. Batarisk. No, not <laughs> quite. So, so who attacked Ancient the Ancient Red Dragon. Who attacked the Aseel? Eh, maybe comparable. Well, we made you do it, actually. It was a control, <laughs> control person. It was Tethra, wasn't it? It was not. So she did encourage it. Or yeah, she is. She was an instigator. Where is it? That that makes this chick is trouble. Trouble right here in River City with a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for the shadow fell. I can't spell. For shadows. There it is. With capital. Capital shit, yes. that rhymes with <laughs> shit, and that stands for shit. I hope this works, but either way, I need that bottle. That flask. I keep saying bottle, I don't know why. Holy cow. Okay. Alright. The good news is that he's in the monster manual, so that means he's not like a god. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do have a, a, like a little a bit of bad cow. news, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not familiar with that one. No? That's one of the books I haven't looked into. Isn't that far. a third party? We shouldn't use that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, uh, that's official. Says who? Watsi? Can we really trust them? They make Magic the Gathering. That seems sus. That's nerdy stuff. Lead designers, Mike Merles, Jeremy Crawford. Uh... Magic editor, the Crawford. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's iron this type. This book's Crawford approved. He's got Crawford on it twice. <laughs> they Sorry, really guys. muzzled Mike Merles. You never hear his name anymore at all. It's, it's true. That's why I focus on the Crawford after that. But uh, you know, it's got the double Crawford on it, man. It's double. Uh, you got the double double Croft action. That's right. All right. Croft John. So, uh, Sir Floofer, the, the dreadful, stands before you. Um, <laughs> we're gonna. We're actually. We're gonna hold on. We're gonna duplicate him because I am going to. Uh, Sir Floofer, the copy stands before you, so I'm going to change some things. <laughs> uh, however, as I said, it's initiative time. If you are grabbing your axe and charging towards uh, the Floofer A Seal. Uh, it says there's no active combat encounter in your currently viewed scene. Oh. Hold on, then. I probably need to do something that I don't know I need to do. I'll select everybody and put them in combat mode. Aha! Alright, everybody roll initiative. I really like this dice mod. Yeah, I've been enjoying it too, actually. Yo, why right. the fuck did you do it thrice? Just <laughs> click clack. Thrice because I'm controlling. Uh, oh, Tethra and Shadow Dancer, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's gonna take me a while to get over the fact that Sir Flooper's out there. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna kill him again. <laughs> this is the horror of the shadow fell at play. <laughs> your worst nightmare come true. Played out before your eyes. There are only like three people Elias has ever loved. <laughs> <laughs> like you died. Horribly I think bad. my character killed one of the other ones before too. Yes. <laughs> I think that was like our, our first kill as a party. It was Elias' love interest. Yeah, yeah. We killed a bunch of goblins before that. They're not people, Cause... though. <laughs> Every first level adventure is a goblin adventure. That's a rule. Giant not rats. kobolds. Goblins. Because kobolds are just wannabe goblins. 
All right, so that'll be good enough for now. Um, I got uh, initiatives from everybody, so let me start the encounter. All right, Zyle is <laughs> the crippled elf is the quickest to move. Uh, <laughs> uh, he will choose to wait because he is a crippled elf and facing a very powerful other creature that he doesn't want to mess with necessarily on his own. So he's going to wait for uh, Hobrook to gain aggro. <laughs> uh, let's see. Tethra sees you making your move, and she is made of sterner stuff than uh, Zyle. And she is going to uh, warp in to the edge of the uh, dim light, uh, which seems to be the uh, you know as close as she can get. Oops, over here. And then she is going to run the rest of the distance and lash out with a couple of uh, strikes with a bladed chain. That's Spike. Tethra's token? I could have sworn it was the other way around. I changed nice. it. Uh, so she actually had wasn't wasn't the chain guy before either, but she was mm. a different one than she is now. Um, but yeah, I switched. So confusing, Zach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, let's see figure out how this works. Okay. And she actually uh, strikes at him twice and uh, cuts in and deals some damage. Is that sick crit? Uh, you can see the flesh of this creature uh, part beneath her strikes, but it uh, does not seem to really react to it. Um, and it's literally just still holding out the uh, iron flask towards Elias, like with a questioning look on its face. Um, let's see. Why don't you le want me to take this flask? Uh, Christopher, it's your turn. You're not sure what changed all of a sudden? But uh, Hobrook let out a furious shout as he started charging in, and then the elf appeared out of nowhere and started attacking the Aesili. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to watch the situation play out. All right. For now. As uh, you do that, let's see. The Aesili doesn't move, however... Uh, Tethra starts screaming. Uh, she was about to take another strike at the Aesili, and then all of a sudden, she is just like, her look, she looks terrified. She is screaming, and she is swinging around wildly, like she's swatting at like something buzzing around her head, and she appears completely deranged. Christopher notes, yeah, that makes sense. Good token. I would think for that. I'll say this. Okay. Uh, Christopher, you're hanging out. Holbrook, your time to shine. All right. I uh, charge straight in against the Asili and try to uh, do as much damage as I can before he's able to strike back. Uh, so that means two swings recklessly from Holbrook's song. Oops, didn't roll advantage. That's the. If a picture popped up for you guys, which I hope it did. Yeah. Um, hey! There's uh That's what he looks like. Yeah, I recall the pan. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, man, it didn't roll my extra damage because the crit came afterwards. Alright, so. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rage too, by the way. Alright, raging and attacking recklessly. Let's see. All right, yeah, yep. that's uh, that's two hits as you close hold, the hold gap. Hold up, the first the first hit didn't do enough damage because it the first the initial roll wasn't a reckless. I had to click the button to add an extra roll in there, and then it crit, but it didn't take into account my brutal critical. Oh, okay. All right, we'll go so ahead. I get and, uh... 
two D twelve on top of that roll. All right, just give me your your total when you've got it. Um, so nine plus fifteen is twenty four, plus ten is thirty four damage. Okay. All right, yeah, your uh, axe bites into its flesh. Uh, go ahead and put yourself up where you are. Oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't bleed as your axe uh, cuts into it. Um, but it does uh, get staggered a little bit as the weight of your blows uh, leans into it. Um, but besides that, it still just has its eyes on Elias. But uh, a as you slice into it, you see it starts to take a deep sigh. And I'll shout, uh, leave us to our business, trickster, or die. You know, I don't think it will. On either. Uh, anything else, Hobrook? Nope. Uh, it's, right. it's affected by uh, my ancestral protectors thing, but that's it. All right. Uh, Elias, your turn, sir. Affected by the cojones it takes to run up to it and swing. What would you like to do? Are you feeling conflicted? <laughs> Very. Good. <laughs> Elias is kind of like looking back and forth. He's looking at Tefra, freaking out over here. He's looking at Christopher backing away, He's taking it easy. He's looking at Cobra charging in. He just closes his eyes and sets his jaw and just strides forward, eyes still closed, and snatches the iron bottle and says, Stop this madness. Yeah. Don't have it. time. Fuck. Uh, as you reach out for it, you try and snatch it. Um, you, you feel that uh, the creature is not uh, relenting its grasp on it and says you promise that you will use this on the genie prince Grej Garibaz at the first opportunity and you keep him sealed for a year and a day I do so promise he lets go you now hold an iron flask in your hands carved in arcane ruins Dick. Anything else, sir? Uh, Elias looks like pleadingly at Holbrook. Says again, we don't have time for this now. And I will have to deal with Grish Garibaz sooner or later. At least this gives me a chance to survive the encounter with him. Holbrook is blinded by uh, Battle Fury right now. <laughs> He's blinded by the light. Wrapped up like a deuce. Another runner. Runner in the night. In the night. Right. Elias will step back here. And... Alright. Uh, the Aesili uh, nods to you as you step back and says, uh, I will hold you to that promise, Elias. Do not break it. Everyone always does. Alright. You gonna do come to the material plane? Uh, what do you do? Um, it seems as if your uh, companions are split on this right now. Uh, Elias appears to have just cut a deal with this being, and uh, Holbrook is still uh, unrelenting in his assault, and Tethra is uh, screaming maniacally, having attacked the creature. Uh, I'm just gonna take a step off, uh, step back away from him, and. I'm honestly gonna keep watching it as well. Um, I mean, we've given him the item. We've, he's made the deal with you. Are you going to leave or are you going to continue this farce? This is my home. Why don't you leave? Call off your friend and go. I'm not keeping you here. Kind of has a point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, says if you do not stop him, I will. Is this the same place that we met him the last time, or? It is not. Okay. Your home seems to be this entire plane of existence. Then you are quite correct. Cure it. Then again, are you going to continue allowing him to engage with you? Well, you can clearly move as you wish. 
You've made the deal. Elias has pro made his promise to you. He sighs and says, I tire of this. Go on if you wish. If you wish to remain and do whatever you are doing, well, we shall see what happens. And uh, he turns away from you to face Holbrook and is just staring him dead in the face as he uh, screams and swings his axe about. Uh, do you want to do anything else, Atticus? Nope. All right. Let's see. On the other side of things, I'm still low on spells. I really don't want to fight something that could probably kill us when I can't cast spells to do nothing. <laughs> Eh, that's not too bad. I'm gonna look something up real quick. So I would say this. Um, Holbrook is not your typical barbarian that flies into like a complete uncontrollable fury when he rages. Uh, he's, you know, that's his true. ancestral protector is, is his subclass. And so you've kind of gotten a, an idea of what he looks like in battle. And as soon as Elias took that flask, he is on another level. He is in that uncontrollable fury state right now. So um, yeah, and you can you can tell that there's a, a flip that a, a switch that's been flipped in him for the moment. Yeah, and I will say like having been around him long enough, I kind of can identify that. That's why it's like we can't stop him right now without literally taking an axe from him. Probably, if he's going to continue to swing at this, we'll have to back him, but. I'm hoping that he'll take a hit and it'll snap him out of it. Hobrook. Let's see. The yeah. seal reaches out and places a finger on your forehead. Make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, with advantage, uh, uh, actually. Uh, I'm really good at wisdom saving throws. Well, you have advantage, so it's better than nothing. Okay. If I can come back from death, you can do this. 15? 15, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's not high enough. <laughs> um, Yikes! Another so, uh, you realize that you're making a horrible mistake right now, and you don't know what happened because uh, the Aceli is your friend, and uh, <laughs> be beyond that, um, he's actually on your side. You remember quite clearly that. Um, there was a uh, another fiend. In fact, the uh, the uh, Rakshasa that you uh, have previously encountered made an appearance, and uh, Elias actually struck another deal with the Rakshasa and promised him a uh, hundred souls in exchange for the Iron Flask to test uh, to uh, trap Gresh Garibaz. And Elias uh, greedily and eagerly accepted. And uh, now this is being it. communicated to me, or I'm you like are, seeing this happen in front of me. You're having your memory modified right now. Um, so he's actually casting the spell, um, modify memory on you. And okay. uh, so you, you are now realizing that you just perceived what happened wrong, and your memory is very clear that uh, Elias made a deal with. Uh, Shabaraz again, a hundred souls for the Iron Flask, so that he may further their own uh, their other deal of uh, trapping Gresh Garibaz. And uh, the Elias owes the flask to the Rakshasa or the Rak. Elias right? got that, Elias yes. owes. Okay. The, the Elias Elias has promised the Rakshasa uh, one hundred souls uh, to be paid, you know, as soon as possible. Um, in exchange Wait. for the Iron Flask. So Elias would receive the Iron Flask in that exchange? Yes, he's getting paid oh, the Iron Flask. He's received the Iron Flask, right? He's holding it right now? He has received it. Uh, in exchange, okay. he has promised to deliver to Shabaraz 100 souls um, to be okay. delivered in a timely fashion. Um, and he accepted eagerly. The ACL here was uh, watching with you. It was like, you shouldn't do that. This is a bad idea. And um, that's exactly what you remember. And then uh, they, you know, they shook on it, and Shabaraz uh, and his backwards paw vanished, and Elias remains here with the iron flask. And uh, that is what happened. 
Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. It is Zyle's turn, and he is still feeling a little weird about what's happening, and he approaches kind of trepidatiously, um, and uh, goes to swing at the creature. Let's see. Oh, Zyle. Oops, I think I rolled one too many. I did. Uh, he misses three times anyway. One more time than he should have missed. But uh, his attack is ineffective. Um, after he swings, the uh, Aceli smiles and vanishes from sight. That is it for now. I'm going to take us out of uh, combat for the time being, unless someone has a compelling reason for me to keep us in. Uh, Hobrook, 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 Hobrook is going to turn his uh, his eyes towards uh, Tethra and uh, what's his face? And uh, I mean, Tethra goes first here. So I guess Hobrook will he's seething with rage and he's got his axe drawn staring at Tethra. Um but perhaps he'll wait and see what she does here. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Keep it in it for now. Uh, let me look something up. Yikes. Okay, so let me roll something for Tethra real quick. That's not going to do it. All right. I forgot to roll it before. Uh, Tethra, on her turn, continues to scream in absolutely blood-curdling pain and terror. And she is freaking out so much that she has dropped her weapon and is clawing at her own face and leaving bloody rents in her flesh uh, as she just tears her skin apart with her own nails and uh, is quickly uh, mutilating herself, in fact. Um, and it just appears to be out of her mind, terrified. Uh, so that's what she's doing. Um, let's see. So, Christopher... Uh, the Aceli has vanished. Halbrook appears to be in an unstoppable rage. Tethra appears to be crazy. And Elias has made a deal with some sort of... Uh, no, who knows what. What do you do? Um, I'm going to go over to Tethra. I'm going to cast resistance on her and hope that it... What does that do exactly? It just adds Add a d4 four. to her next saving throw. Okay. I'm going to choose wisdom and hope that that helps her. Oh, right, it's a cantrip. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, Okay, cool. Um, actually, hold on. <clears throat> Don't you have something dealing with fear? Yeah, that's what I'm... I, I don't think I have it prepared, though. Mm. <laughs> Fancy magic. Alright, anything else, Christopher? I think that's all I got. Alright, Hobrook, not a whole lot has changed. What do you do? Okay, so you said that the Asili is my friend, as far as my memories go. What kind of a friend are we talking here? Just like a person so, that I am a man of, like... So, I guess that terms wasn't... With? I guess that wasn't the focus. Just uh, he certainly isn't responsible for this deal right now. More that uh, he checked in on you guys, expressed his pleasure that you guys were doing well, um, questioned you about the genie, and then right as you guys were discussing that, Shabaraz appeared. And then that's when, when that transpired. So if, uh, okay. maybe... You don't necessarily feel like he's your friend, so maybe I said that out of, out of hand. That's not how he modified your memory. Uh, he just changed okay. uh, the flask part. 
Okay, because Holbrook's issue with uh, the Yasili is not Tether's issue. Like, um, I probably could have expected that Tether was going to come into conflict with the Yasili here, regardless of what Holbrook did. And I'm not sure that Holbrook was one to protect the Yasili with his life, especially with, you know, he's not really his close friend or ally as mm -hmm. far as as far as he's aware so and Tethra seems to already be incapacitated so um I don't think Hobrick is going to attack her but the question is what does he do that is the question yeah. he appears to have lost his mind I think he's gonna throw his axe as far as he can in whatever direction it, whatever direction uh, is is uh, most. I, I don't know whatever direction he can build the most most momentum in or heave it with the most strength, and he's going to uh, just start uttering a string of dwarven curses and uh, start pounding his fists against a tree. Yeah, you uh, wheel around uh, in absolute fury and hurl Holbrook's song uh, to the northeast. And uh, it sails probably about 80 feet uh, through the air before uh, sticking into the ground with a thud, uh, half sticking straight up out of, into the air. And uh, you walk stride over to a tree and begin to pound into it, uh, just trying to release some of your anger and frustration. Get yourself under control. Um... Let's see. Should I stay in combat? Does anybody else have any reason to need an initiative tracker at this point? Or uh, can I take us out of that? I'm good. Okay. Ending yeah, combat. Yeah. Uh, that said, uh, so Hobrook has thrown his axe and strode off for the time being. Uh, Tethra is still continuing to scream and claw at her face and her flesh. And she's like running around, like pacing, like a chicken with her head cut off, just about. And uh, yeah, are any of you guys doing anything about that? He did my thing about that. I don't want to waste um, the spell slot on her. I'll, uh, you know what? Let me. I'm gonna cast mending on her. Can I do that? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll cast um, prayer of healing for all of us. Oof. Yeah, uh, I'm not even gonna bother rolling that d4. For that one, <laughs> I'll just cast it on her again. Okay. Oops, I think I typed the wrong. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Ooh, that's a much meatier roll. Okay. All right, yeah, so uh, she continues to claw at herself and tear away at her own flesh. And uh, you do your best to mend it, um, as she does. But uh, she is uh, uh, un in unconsolable at this point. Um, but your heals certainly helped, at least somewhat, because she does appear to be damaging herself significantly. Um, and, uh, yeah. Her, her, her screams seem to be intensifying as well for, for what that's worth but uh, any, anybody else want to do anything or is, uh, is that pretty much what you got uh, I, I'm doing prayer of healing okay. what what type of creature do, do we know what type of creature the Asili is uh, no it resembles a satyr but it's uh, from your estimation it's unlike you, you think it's a unique creature uh, unlike really anything that you've uh, encountered before um, and especially given what you've uh, seen, uh, especially in this encounter, uh, is exhibiting some uh, very unusual traits. Yep. So we don't have reason to believe that it's like Fey or a Celestial or something like that? Um, I'm not sure what kind of check you would make to even try and determine that. You, you don't really know. Um, I guess man I don't even know what skill that would be 
Let me look at a character sheet for a sec. Is it animal handling? Knowledge, planes. Make a... Wait, wasn't it a history? Make a history one? check. Yeah, I think we did history before. Because yeah, I recall doing a history on it. Yeah, it seems likely. If anybody cares to try and muster any knowledge of this thing. Yeah, I, I forget was what was determined before by you guys, but you do not glean any uh, additional information. Uh, really, at most, you might have heard the name before, but uh, really no details uh, are known to you, you know, beyond perhaps that it's, uh, you know, an immortal being of some sort. Okay, um... You know, I'm gonna cast... Do I want to cast this? Uh, Zach, you did see I did the prayer of healing, though, right? I did, and I actually counted that. Okay. Um, that said... She is still screaming. Does anybody else want to do anything else before I roll her next save? Elias is going to put the uh, iron flask in his pocket. Okay. And watch solemnly. 16. Got a d4. Yeah. Can't get resistance twice, so... 19. Still screaming. Uh, still really? clawing her face. Uh, I'm assuming you're still taking damage then? It appears as if uh, whatever is afflicting her has not passed. Um, does anybody else want to take one more action before I roll again? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a cure Resistance wounds. On again, it. and then a cure wounds. Okay. Noted on both. 13. Yep. All right. I don't really have any other. Ooh. Ooh. That's the second that Dude, one you rolled no, before this no was the same. I'm gonna cast you resistance again. Die. Um. All right. So she. Uh, screams uh, louder still than she has yet and suddenly uh, stiffens and her eyes roll back in her head she collapses to the ground she appears to be dead per permadead? yeah <laughs> I don't want to waste the diamond damn it we needed her um you see Zyle uh, approach, stand over her uh, body and kneel, and uh, softly murmurs uh, a little prayer in Elvish, and uh, basically says, uh, may your spirit come to walk among us again soon, and uh, arranges her arms in a more uh, uh, dignified position than they were. No, oh, it's yeah, it's stable. Never mind. I was thinking that was preser preservation. Yeah, uh, she she is she is dead. She is dead, dead. She is gone at this point. I mean, she's gone. But if we rest, then we can prepare raise dead. <laughs> if that's an action you choose to take, uh, yeah, that seems feasible. But that is entirely up to you. But as of this moment, she is dead. This place is tearing us apart. Did not look like a good way to go either. No. Congratulations, Zyre. You're the new Huntmaster. He glowers at you. And he glowers at Holbrook too. Holbrook is actually going to spin on Elias at this point and say, Elias, you're weak. Pathetic. What entities have you not made a deal with? And he's gonna. He he still he hasn't worked himself through his rage. He's gonna start approaching Elias. He doesn't have a weapon drawn, but he he looks pissed. 
All right. Elias, you choose to react at all? Uh, Elias is going to back up and put his hands up and say, I have never been your enemy, Elrook. Do you even care for the battle against Raz? Seems to me you're in this for yourself. I'm not the one delaying that battle. We should be moving. You're compromising it. Do you care for the mortal plane? Or do you care perhaps, for yourself? Perhaps he's just gathering the necessary power to make certain that we can defeat him. Do you not know how a warlock gains their strength? You call him weak, yet he gains power by By packs. signing every contract that's put in front of him? A warlock is gains gonna, his strength. If he can get close enough to Elias, he's going to swing on him. Alright, uh... I mean, yeah, probably. I mean, I imagine Elias, you're going to keep trying to evade him. Yeah. All right, so at this Hobart's point... Hobart's not sprinting. He's not going to charge or anything like that, but he's constantly um, approaching. All right. Elias, you uh, continue to back away from him, but uh, before long, you reach the edge of the shoreline. Uh, how do you choose to proceed? Walk around the edge of it? Uh... Other, uh, other options? Levitate. Yeah, Elias is going to use his levitation and, like, hover in the middle of this uh, pond thing. Yeah, uh, Hobrook, he, he uh, continues to move backwards and uh, begins to float above the surface of the water. Uh, how high are you floating? A um, couple feet. Okay. Pond isn't super deep, but uh, at the point Elias is, you would guess it's a few feet. So... There's no pond there. Oh, right, I forgot. That's a different map. <laughs> good, good, good point. I remember that now. Oh. I forget that part. Float up a tree, float up a tree. <laughs> Never mind. All right. I, I fooled myself. Uh, <laughs> Congratulations, you've played yourself. <laughs> All right, so you, you continue to back away, potentially also floating away. That's up to you yeah. from uh, Holbrook, as you do not reach a pond. Maybe he'll float uh, like 10 feet or so. Yeah, Holbrook, you, you continue to approach steadily, but he's uh, maintaining the gap between you unless you choose to amp it up. Nope. Uh, given his inability to, to reach Elias, um, he's uh, going to once again kind of look for the nearest inanimate object to uh, take out his Perfect. fury on. While they're doing this... Oh, one sec, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, let's save it for now, if you don't mind. That was really good. Alright, thanks, babe. Sorry, guys. There was a question of saving pizza or not. Continue. While they're While doing they're this, doing. I don't know how much. Real you, quick. I don't know what you caught of my, what I said, but Hobrook is absent a way of reaching Elias. He's gonna once again um, look for the nearest ina inanimate object, or even the ground, if if there's nothing else to to take his rage out on. Um, yeah, you, you do so. I mean, there's some trees and rocks around you. Besides that, just the ground. So you uh, you pound away at whatever uh, surface you choose. He might he might sling a rock at Elias, but he's not really skilled in using such weaponry. All right, yeah, you uh, you do so. Um, Christopher, what were you saying? I'll cast revivify. You're gonna cast revivify? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Some that's... diamond worth three hundred. Okay. And that's uh, within I forget, a minute. Uh, a minute? Yeah, good enough. Um, okay. Yeah, you work uh, some some powerful, actually third level, uh, moderately okay magic. And, some uh, some dice. Yeah, a little little on the dark side as uh, you reach to uh, grasp uh, Tethra's spirit as it uh, even now uh, moves towards Mar Daniel and the the device there that captures them. But uh, suddenly it's being pulled back and uh, flies back into Tethra's body and her eyes uh, snap open and she gasps and uh, her face is a mess still. Like uh, she's a, a cut, you know, scratched up, you know, just a r real horror show. Um, and her eyes are still wide and terrified, but she's no longer screaming and like scratching at herself. But uh, yeah, she doesn't look good. That definitely helps, though. All right, yeah, she uh she calms down a bit. Her breath slows, and uh, some of the scratches on her face mend, 
and uh, she, you know, seems to be evening out some, and her eyes uh, focus, and they focus on you, Christopher. This is you. You brought me back. Oh yes. Why? Why would? Why did you do that? That is I was... what I do, honey. I am a cleric, and you did not need to die. That thing. It. Oh gods! I don't want to think of it. I'm gonna have to ask you to for just a little bit. It is good information to have. She shakes her head and says, I "Do not even remember. Just." Hobrick, you got that axe? <laughs> my worst nightmares, my horrors, just all playing out before me. <laughs> I was living them. I. I couldn't take it. I snapped. I. I, I don't know beyond that. It's just a blur of. She shudders and uh, all, it kind of wretches, but doesn't throw anything up. Uh, she, she gives you a, a long, hard look and says, "Thank you for saving me. I did not expect such kindness from you." By the uh, grace of Yandala. I did not relish waiting years more to come back to my people. Even if we did not relish the idea of you killing some child. She sighs and says, uh, well, just see what happens. Perhaps those days will be behind us soon. She says, I certainly wish you luck on your quest if you can bring all this to an end. And I will help you however I can. Alright. She, uh, so, uh, she gets up to her feet and, uh, it's kind of wobbly still, but, uh, you know, is able to walk around and kind of test her footing for a minute. She says, uh, I believe I can continue whenever you're ready, but she looks around at you and says, you would do well to keep this conversation be a seal and secrets upon our return. I look at the other, the other elf. Yeah. And, he... and ask him, like, and will you keep this a secret? Kind of or do we around. need to kill and revive you as well? <laughs> he uh, he, need to listen. he looks between you and Tethra, and it's kind of his gaze bounces back with, uh, between the two of you several times. And Tethra uh, just stares him down and just nods slowly. And he says, "Yes, I trust the judgment of the Huntmaster." I'll keep your secret. what we needed to hear. It was just the other day you were so loyal to the gatekeeper. Now you keep hey, let's not him. push our luck, bud! Well, you have opened our eyes somewhat. I'm glad. Perhaps given us hope where it has been absent for a very long time. I'm glad you're walking the left-hand path with us. Uh, and here I had hoped that we were walking the right hand for once. We're all a bunch of filthy leftists. <laughs> Holbrook? Very well. You know, the way at this point she gestures back towards the uh, the trail and says, uh, I will follow your lead. Holbrook, are you okay? Are we chill? Are we good? Are we chill? Hoberg, Hoberg is definitely going to take a minute to cool off. Uh, he's no longer in his rage, but he is emotionally spent. Uh, we're already in the Shadowfell. He was already like struggling today with his emotional state of mind, and uh, this this recent events have just completely spent his ability to to uh, I, I don't know care. And uh, so he will eventually uh, come around and follow the party but he is not going to go retrieve Hobrook's song from wherever he hefted into the woods he's going to uh, leave it behind Atticus oh, will go get it for him <laughs> no <laughs> that's a part of who you are he's like no that's that's yours you may not need it now and I'll hold it for you for now but one day you will want this back I mean Hobrook doesn't say as much so whether Atticus even notices is, is a question, but that that's your choice. If you want to go get the axe, awesome. But otherwise, yeah, I'm I making mean, the choice that Hobrick's leaving it behind. 
Okay. I mean, yeah, Atticus is going to go get that blade for you. He saw, I mean, and your rage and fury, he's going to have seen you thrown it away. And if you were okay. walking back without it, he's going to be like, no, you're a soldier. That's your weapon. Okay. Oh, I got plenty of weapons. Yeah, that's no, no <laughs> shortage of those. <laughs> we all do. Wait, wait, you, you got uh, a couple of maces, another great axe, uh, a ridiculous warhammer. Uh, I've never even used that warhammer. Yeah, I know. I was thinking it might make an appearance at some point. It's uh, yeah, that that could be some development. I don't know. It's uh, I I, yeah. I figured you it was just too OP, and you're like, no, I'm gonna balance myself and not use it or something. <laughs> so, uh, all right. But, yeah, when we uh, got Atticus around, I I don't have that concern so much about anyone. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It's a very well, simple fix for Atticus. All right. Well, well, well Hellbrook hucks his axe into the, uh, the darkness fix, where, uh, you know, perhaps he notices Atticus pick it up. Perhaps he doesn't. Uh, but, well, I guess you approached him about it. But regardless, you uh, are holding on to it for now, Atticus. Yes. Um, I'm going to take a quick bio break, uh, and then we can continue. But give me a couple of minutes here. Sounds good. I'll do the same. All right. That was fun. Crazy. Matt, do you want um, me to actually have Hobrick's song in my inventory? Yeah. Um, Hobrick is not interested in taking it back right now. Okay. It's just a plus one great X. Okay. Well, actually, I think it has... Well, it's it's in the items somewhere, so you shouldn't need to, to copy that. down any of its abilities. Oh. Well, I know pretty much he's only seen you use that, barring a few other situations, so... He's used the Mace of Disruption a, a number of times recently as well, but um, yeah, yeah, here. certainly Hob Hobrick's Song is the, the weapon that uh, he's closest with. That's part of... He's like, yeah, he's mad, but it's still his weapon. And he had enough soldiers with him that had meltdowns, he's like, that's probably what's happening. <laughs> If I had any more fifth level slots, I'd be casting the holy weapon to make you feel better. <laughs> Honestly. So as you guys can see, if you had uh, already traveled to that statue, I would have been in trouble tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, who knows how much time it takes to get from the statue to the whatever <laughs> yeah. the town is called. Just would have been a lot happening at a much shorter distance. <laughs> yeah. But uh, at any rate. So you guys have uh, more or less settled the uh, affair here. Are you uh, remounting and continuing on your path eastward? Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now you continue to travel, uh, following the path 
uh, for a number of hours to the east. And uh, enough time passes to the point where you're, you're starting to get tired. Like you, you can, you know, keep pushing, and you're not gonna, you know, you'll be okay. But uh, you are getting tired, and uh, it's about at that point when you reach the outskirts of Mar Daniel. Uh, you can see the ruins uh, ahead of you. The, uh, you know, the slightly destroyed wall with gaps in it, and the, uh, you know, ruined buildings or ruined to various degrees uh, strewn behind it standing between you and the shore of uh, the Shadowfell version of Lake Artan, above which boats Fingerat's castle. This is not where the Statue of Light is, right? Oh, if you guys want to make a pit stop at the statue, you can do that. I kind of forgot. Sorry. Listen, I, I Personally, I'd prefer if we rested there, because I know um, we don't get as affected. Yeah. The, the statue is a, a couple hours out from Mar Daniel. But if you want, you can stop there. That's up to you. I know Atticus is going to pitch for that one, for a place to rest for the night. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Good. Um, you guys can do that if you want. Elias would like to cast Identify on the Iron Flask, um, you know, as everyone else is going to sleep or setting up watch. He's hoping that it's empty. <clears throat> One sec. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and check the items page. And uh, it is indeed empty. Seal's evil brother is trapped inside. Nope, yeah. it is empty. I added it. And uh, otherwise, it, uh, it functions as a normal iron flask, with the exception that it has some custom engravings on it, and Gresh Garibaz has disadvantage on his uh, saving throws against being trapped in the, the iron flask. He was What's any this... creature? Well, yeah, no. you can get it. The... Or is it just uh, otherworldly? Oh, like if... A, or extra planar, I forget. Let's say. Uh, oh, you no. can target any creature, but it, do oh, it looks like it might only affect creatures that are not native to the plane of existence. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay, yeah, so... just weird wording. Yeah, so he can't use it if Grish summons him. What if Gresh comes for us on the material plane? Is Gresh native to the elemental plane of air? Or his type of Jin is typically from there, I think, right? Hard to say. So, I've called him a Jin, mostly because I think Jin sounds cooler than Genie. But technically, I should be mm -hmm. calling him a Genie, because a Jin in D&D is a type of Genie. So I actually did make a point of saying genie when the uh, Dao spoke earlier, but it was literally only once, and I've called him a jinn pretty much every other time. That said, he is not actually a jinn, although he does probably most closely resemble a mix between an Afridi and a jinn. Um, but he does not appear to fit any of the uh, typical elemental classes of genie. Gotcha. Ah. Uh. The Jin in the Monster Manual is an elemental plane of air, though, right? That's correct. Okay. That's so, mostly what yeah. I was wondering. I know that uh, Grege is kind of a special case. Sure. <clears throat> He's a prince. Apparently so. That's... He was just, we, just we, referred to as one. Yeah, we knew he was a uh, noble of some kind, but now he's royalty. All right. So, uh, did you guys? I, I don't think I got an executive decision. Uh, did you guys stop at the statue to have your long rest mm -hmm. uh, prior to uh, going on? Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, you guys uh, make a quick stop at your your favorite uh, resting place that you have found here, a uh, brief uh, oasis within the uh, sea of horrible darkness that is the Shadowfell. And uh, yeah, you uh, bask within its light and uh, feel the better for it and much safer uh, as you pass the evening, we'll call it. I'm trying to find the journal entry where I actually have that. There it is, find that statue. Uh, let's see. Elbrook, you enter the uh, radius of the light, and while uh, your feelings regarding Elias and all that transpired are, are no less valid, um, the uh, apathetic despair that uh, fell over you before has lifted. Um, so you feel better in that regard. Not to say you can't be upset about the other stuff anyway, but... Uh, <laughs> That much has has sure. uh, eased up upon you. Now, does the effect just lift whatever detrimental effect was upon me from the Shadowfell, or does it actually like help to cheer me up? Like, is it um, just taking away a bad effect, or is it also applying a positive effect? It's not. It's allowing you the chance to overcome it yourself more than anything. Like, the literal suppressive power of the Shadowfell has been removed from you, but that doesn't mean you're in a beautiful, cheery mood. It just means that you're no longer being psychologically oppressed by the physical nature of this place. So yeah, mechanically, those effects are no longer present, but you also have a chance to, you know, rise out of your, your apathy or your, you know... Uh, depression or what, however you want to spin it uh, okay. and, and move past that if you wish. I'll, I'll let you play that how you want. Sure. Alright. You guys uh, taking the, the normal watch of uh, uh, Elias and somebody else first and then <laughs> uh, you know Pretty much everyone, including Teth, takes a watch. Yeah, like the plan. Second watch. Actually, uh, uh, Elias will insist that Tether get some rest this time, and he'll take her watch. You know, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, all right. No, for, uh, for, for real. All right. Well, Chris <laughs> Christopher, I believe you said you took second watch. Is that right? Yeah. And Atticus usually takes first. All right, so uh, so it proceeds. Um, Atticus and Christopher, your watches uh, do pass uneventfully, and uh, you know Atticus, you you retire after a few hours and get some sleep. Christopher, you uh, rouse Elias, uh, you know, and are suspicious to whatever degree you feel is appropriate <laughs> uh, as you do so. And uh, Elias, you you are uh, awakened for a watch. Elias. The Rolex, so it's a nice watch. <laughs> Elias smiles sadly, briefly at Christopher, and then um, kind of sets himself up against a tree or something, and starts looking around. He'll he'll set up the the lantern of true sight. Okay. All right. Uh, Fifteen minutes passes. Are you still awake? Yes. <laughs> okay. At least I hope so. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tethra suddenly materializes out of the darkness, uh, illuminated by the lantern that you have uh, placed beside you. And uh, she kind of crouches down next to you and uh, looks you in the face and says, uh, I am genuinely surprised you are still awake right now. Do you intend to stay awake for the next couple of hours? Yes, you should rest. I have a better idea. I'm gonna go take a look inside the city, see what I can learn, see where Evelios is now. What is your intent once we enter? To be honest, I'm not sure. We need that staff back, but we need a dagger more. The dagger? Of Vingrath Fire Eye. 
Oh, his well, actually, his staff as well. Oh. A lot of staffs going around right now. I can but uh, for some reason. Yeah, the da dagger belonged to the uh, the assassin Kylas Faro, who uh, you guys have learned a little of. Um, uh, but uh, so yeah, we need we need uh, Vingrath's staff more. Well, know that I am with you, no matter what you all decide. But to hear you before, some of you anyway, speak of destroying the crystal within Mardaniel that holds the souls of our fallen warriors. Is that still your intent, or do you wish to simply tell Evelios that the mission has been completed and gain entry to Vengarath's castle? If it were up to me, yes, I'd see those souls released, sent to the rightful places. I don't think it's something I could do on my own, and I'm not sure whether or not my friends uh, have the heart or the time for such an undertaking. She uh, again gives you a long stare and says, I cannot believe I am saying this, but I believe in you and your companions. I believe if anyone can find Vangarath within, alive or dead, you stand the best chance and perhaps even at stopping Ros Mardalis himself. So, that being the case, I would love to see these practices of ours come to an end, and I will aid you in this. So, I'm going to Intamar Daniel to have a look around, see where Avelios is, see if we have a clear route to the crystal. Stay awake, and I'll return within the hour. Don't get into too much trouble. They will not see me. She uh, backs away out of the the radius of the the bright light of the lantern, and as soon as she does so, she uh, disappears into the shadows. Okay. Elias, uh, he'll, he'll kind of fiddle with the dagger occasionally, like jab it into himself to jolt himself awake if he feels too sleepy. All right. Yeah, you managed to keep yourself awake. Uh, it's actually not that hard once if you actually try. Um, <laughs> that's a, that's so, first time. Uh, Turns out any amount of effort is enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The dagger was not necessary, but uh, your determination was commendable. Um, true to her word, uh, shortly under an hour, uh, Tethra returns, uh, materializing much as she disappeared, and uh, she's she appears, fucking fast. She appears to be. Uh, oh, right. Oh, yeah. Well, she is, because she can also <laughs> teleport through shadows. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I forget. I did forget that you were that far away. Still, she is really fast. We'll say she pulled it off. Maybe she said within two hours. I'm going to retcon it a little bit. We're going to stretch it. Uh, Retcons? Ah. Uh, uh, I, I, Worst I, I, DM ever. Uh, well, that was already established with the number of times I got rule lawyered earlier. So, uh, really... <laughs> The bar can't go any lower, so I'm just going to embrace it. Um, so, yeah, uh, she says, uh, before your watch is ended, I will return. And just before your watch ends, she returns, out of breath, but it's plausible, perhaps. Um, <laughs> was that one retcon or two? You went from one hour to two counting. and then to the, and I, well, to, to the end of the watch. Te technically... The watches are two hours long, and you're right, 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 the right, watch, right. so that was like an hour and 40 minutes, which is within two hours, I'm just saying. Um, all right, one retcon. One retcon. I'm it's writing it down, though. All right, that's fine. Um, I mean, Brian's streaming. You could, like, put up, like, one of those, like, <laughs> trackers and stuff, like, keep track of how many retcons I have, and, you know, <laughs> shame me. <laughs> when we get to 99 um, retcons, we're giving away a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, all, all, it's all. off my back at 99 retcons. I will yeah. go shirtless. 99 retcons. All uh, tier one subscribers get a uh, you know plus one magic item. But uh, anywho, uh, so she returns, uh, wide eyed and out of breath. This is Elias. Elias. Yes. And I found Avelios. Well, it's with the crystal. They're performing a ritual or preparing to as we speak. It takes some time to prepare, but they are going to destroy another innocent. You're like, don't care. 
I'm going to bed. Watch it over. <laughs> What's the point of intervening now? Tell that to the next Watchmen, you dumbass. What's the point of intervening now? If we smash the crystal, the souls will be released anyway. Yes, but if we wait, the little girl who will be hosting the soul is going to be destroyed. And if we act now, she may live. How many times has Tethra been through puberty? <laughs> she, she she actually mentioned before that she's been reborn twice. This is sounds, her third body. Sounds like hell. Right, um. Well, the uh, the ritual takes place when they turn fourteen, so like she, at least she's catching like the you know she the misses part of the, it. the early parts of it at least. Elias will rouse. It's her. all bad. <laughs> it's not any better. Elias rouses his companions. There's been a new development. The Velios is in the midst of another ritual to take the soul of an innocent girl. And you need the soul to give it to the Raksasha. <laughs> what? What? Sasha. I heard your deal. My deal had nothing to do with souls. Fuck you, Elias. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. He has a point. <laughs> Get in line, Brooke. And Tethra believes now is our chance to strike if we wish to end this cruel practice forever. say you. Bitch, I just said let's go. Mm. Sorry, I'm snappy. I'm tired. <laughs> no, quick Not question. mechanically tired. <laughs> um, has with the, with the watches and everything, do we still have enough time to have slept and recovered our spells? Nope. Not if you leave now, which you'll have to do if you wish to reach Mar Daniel in time, potentially, to save the sacrifice seat. That choice is yours, however. Press the button. The gatekeeper is our last ticket into the castle. And you want to kill him? Why is he our ticket into the castle? What, have you been sleeping for the past five days? <laughs> First the Rakshasa thing, and now I, this. I don't think we need him. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't need him, why are we out here doing this errand in the first place? That's... That's a good point. Because we wanted Why the fuck staff. are we doing this? We wanted our because staff Because he took their staff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, we, you showed him... Yeah, staff, oh, Brooke, you dumbass. And took it. <laughs> Hold on, wait, what? Come on, out of character now. We're out here because we wanted the gatekeeper's help help getting into the castle. It had nothing to do with the staff. Am I mistaken? No. Yes. Mm, so, it, what? Well, no. it, for, okay, what I recall it, of it was we went back to him um, with, like, we had the staff and we were basically trying to get his help with stuff and he wanted to see the staff. Um, and, and we let him basically talk to it. And, and then... He basically said, with all of his guards behind him, Okay, well, I'm keeping this. You go kill the other thing. Stop these things from happening. And it was either a, we kill everybody there, or we go figure out what the hell was going on. So we went, all right. It wasn't because we cared about the staff. It was because he offered to help us get into the castle. That is correct. It was pretty much he offered to help you get into the castle in exchange for solving this problem. And oh, by the way, I'm all holding on to the staff while you go because we want to study it and shit. I thought we had, like, other people besides him that were offering us way yeah, back. There, there was one. Yeah, to be able you to. guys destroyed him. <laughs> okay. Can we wreck on that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let me get my pencil out. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not adding to my tally. No, I no, no. Irenicus might be able to help us get into that castle. Yeah, but he's a bitch. <laughs> so am I. 
I mean, yeah, but we have to put up with you. So, here's something we could Elias. potentially do. We stop him, kill him, whatever we need to do to do that, and then we use a diamond to bring him back and basically force him to do what we want. Uh, no. I don't like that route, because that's yeah. an expensive And then we agent. kill him again. The, the thing about doing that is that my alignment kind of has to stay in the realm of good <laughs> if we want me to be useful to us at all. But if you're doing it to an evil person, like, I was going to say, where, where does that land? Okay, okay. I don't know. This is a tough one. If I was chaotic good, we could make this argument. Uh, now, I you, will also say... Are you lawful good? No, I'm neutral good. Oh, okay. I can also okay. bring him right. back if I, you know, had time to rest. So that may not be on your soul. No, I'd already be fucked if I was not good. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know, the end may justify the means here. I, I believe in the good of stopping this from happening, but we also need to look at the greater good as well. And as a last resort, I have no qualms with putting that on my soul. But I will need to rest. I have no spells prepared to deal with that. I have a hard time believing that Elias has grown a heart overnight, but I am very much able yeah. to Fuck see you, that Elias. he's come up with an, another reason to pursue his personal whims over the greater quest. I'm not going. A lot of souls in that crystal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised, Tobruk. I thought you would care more about saving innocence life. Yeah, fuck you, Hobrook. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we all just gang up on Christopher? <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Christopher. <laughs> I wish I could trust you, Elias. What is this? But you don't know how? He made no mention of this dilemma prior to us going to bed, and now in the middle of the night, it's urgent? How is this even coming to light? Tethra went scouting. Tethra speaks up and says, It's true. I slipped out while Elias was on watch after a word with him and investigated Mardaniel. Thought best to know what we were heading into. The choice no, is yours. Decision. I understand you may want to be at full strength. If you, well, well, I do not know what you choose, what you are planning to do, but I just wanted to give you the information so you could make a choice out of your conscience. Elias would like to sense motive on Tethra, um, or maybe it's an insight, um, but sure. Uh, See if anything's hinky. There's a possibility that she set up an ambush for them. For them? Oh God. For, for us. You mean against us? Uh, yeah. On behalf of them. Mm. For you. Yes. Well, I mean, that we would be ambushed thinking that we're we're striking uh, Gatekeeper of Elios. And that's the other thing that's bothering Hobok right now, is that prior to now, <laughs> like, Tethra's all of a sudden wanting to kill her own master? Like, She's not yeah, wanting to kill necessarily her own master, but... Uh, I revived her. She's... She is so indebted to me. She, she does feel uh, very thankful for the kindness you guys have shown, which seems to be a rarity in this realm. But beyond that, it's more what she was uh, saying to Elias before. Um, and I, I guess you don't really know this, but just so I can clarify, uh, she believes that you guys might actually succeed in your quest, which would mean I, potentially... I character, I get it. Okay. I get it. Uh, Holbrook that, 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 doesn't get it. It seems like fair. there have been an awful lot of changes of heart overnight and now all of a sudden we need to be doing this thing right away yep two, uh, two, uh, from two <laughs> characters that he not, didn't necessarily trust to begin with fair enough well that is how things lie indeed most indeededly and scuba dooba -dooba. Well, what are we doing? If we linger, the choice will be made for us. 
Let us rest. I'll go. I'll go where the party goes. But I've stated my objections. I don't think Atticus and I can be great help in our states right now. I'm more concerned about being overwhelmed because we don't have the proper strength to do what, what needs to be done. I agree. If it's the right thing to do, it needs doing. I agree that it is the right thing to do. I just Regardless don't believe it's a tactical strength. thing to do. So I will say that if the group decides that we move forward, I will back that play. I'd rather make the tactical decision, however. Let's be heroes. We can I'm be not heroes. Religious I'm it's not a religious man. Day. But Do you I know what they call a hero? A dead man. <laughs> Bitch, aren't you called the hero or something? No, I'm called the wolf. And I died for that. Ah, there are things worse than that. alive for a dead guy. <laughs> because my uh, very loyal friend sacrificed himself. I'm not actually laughing. I'm just very tired. What a fucking idiot, right? I don't even like him. I fucked his mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, I possessed Atticus for a moment in chat. I couldn't help myself. It, it is complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. My 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 deity decided that uh, he didn't want to have to deal with Tristan's brain farts anymore, or lack of a brain. All right, Tethra. Yeah. I hope you've been as honest with me as I have been with you. She nods. Says, "Uh, if I had not been, you would be dead already, and we would not be speaking." It's not death that scares me, Tesra. Well, that is good, because that may still await you. Let us go. We still have our displacer mounts, right? Uh, yeah. All right. All right. You guys uh, begin to follow Tethra into the outskirts of Mardaniel. And... I think that is going to be a good place for us to call it tonight. Uh, proceeding much further will likely push us uh, well past our uh, end time. I appreciate it. My brain's already dead. <laughs> I'm so early. Yeah. Alright guys, well that was uh, another cool. fun one, I think. At least for me. So uh, thanks for playing. I enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you guys had fun. Thank you. I'll remember to have fun sure. watching her Swedish show. <laughs> Indeed. It's a good show. Like, like, comment, and subscribe. Smash, oh, yeah. Smash that like button. Smash it. That, that's the link. Fucking up. rail that uh, like button. Uh, <laughs> just with all fists, you uh, just... one viewers. <laughs> it's me, and I'm not subscribing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Not up to your standards. That's, that's, <laughs> fair. that's, uh, that's fair. This stream that's sucks. Fair. <laughs> Maybe we'll All get right, rid guys. of it next time. <laughs>